Hello everyone, welcome here. Myself Shekhar Mitla and I am the software industry from the past two decades. And here I am the course instructor for this JavaScript course with the help of ChartGPT to make you master in less time. Getting started. Introduction. Welcome here to use this online tutorial to speed up and slow down videos to complete the program. Learn at any time from anywhere using internet connected mobile or computer system. Make sure to use practical exercises on every lecture what you are learning from section 0 onwards. How to get help? Check your knowledge using documents. For instance, quick help Google or Stack Overflow search engine techniques. Submit your questions on asking QA forums for detail what you have tried with the screenshot of error code practiced by you. And ChartGPT will support you in all the way where you want to create your own programs and examples and step by step guide how to take. Yes, we are teaching you a step-by-step -step process to utilize ChartGPT in this course. How to approach the course? The best way to approach the course is to review videos with your practical hands-on sessions. Follow the video guide with extra notebook information for practice. And every lecture you have to practice with a real-world example and make sure to add your own ideological real world examples and practice. Review certain information by reading examples part of video sessions. Exercises and solutions. You will be assigned a simple JavaScript exercise and anyhow we are providing you a solution for this. Make sure to create your own way to crack this exercise which is based on your previous lectures only. Once you've done the exercise, check with your like what we are providing and a solution for you. Thanking you. Hello everyone, welcome here. Getting started on Windows, Mac and Linux operating system. See here. Choosing an operating system is very essential for beginners. So who are start learning JavaScript or any other programming language who wants to start their career. Choosing it's a very essential. So either if you are comfortable in Windows or Mac OS or Linux, any operating system you, you feel comfortable Yes, use such an operating system to start learning this course. I strongly recommend you. I'll see you at the course. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome here. How to ask great questions for this course? Quick help. Your great questions will be answered on Google try it first. And second level, look at errors in your code writing and you may visit stackoverflow.com which is the super seniors which are already answered here in great way. One of the best technical forum in the world where many of the super seniors answered and getting their query solutions quickly. Writers, here you can write using this option to get your solution. Any of error while you are practicing and make sure what the lecture is explained a step by step process, you just take a note and practice in your local development environment. And also with your query, we will respond and will give you a specific solution with the concept which is explained in this course and also using chart GPT to get your quickest solution to start learning and make master in JavaScript. 
थैंक यू हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम हियर एफ ए क्यूज फॉर दिस कोर्स लेट सी हियर वॉट डू आई नीड बिफोर लर्निंग दिस कोर्स इफ यू नो बेसिक कंप्यूटर ऑपरेटिंग एंड इफ यू नो हाउ टू ब्राउज यस यू कैन स्टार्ट लर्निंग दिस कोर्स द सेकेंड क्वेश्चन इज इज एनी सोर्स प्रोवाइडेड फॉर दिस कोर्स यस ऑल द सोर्स कोड इज शोन ऑन द वीडियो लेक्चर्स and a step by step process is explained you to practice a very well so learn the lectures from scratch and all the lectures you have to start from beginning section to till end this approach you have to follow any computer requirements for this course yes basic computer with internet connected for video lectures and javascript practice you have to install any of id if you are known and you are having any favorite code editor you just install it or else we suggest you a great ide which is free you just try to download and install a step by step process is also explained you a very detailed and practice real world examples chat gpt ai tool is introduced here to practice more and more to get master in less time i wish you good luck see you at the course thank you hello everyone welcome here In this lecture you are going to know and learn what is chat gpt yes this is a word is a very very trending word nowadays in the it and it relevant industries so this is an a great artificial intelligence open ai tool to making you master in any of your required skill let's see now go to google and simply hit chat gpt and let's see the first link open ai.com there's the blog and chat gpt link is following here it's a optimizing language model for dialogue for creating a required conversational way how you will ask your friend to a question or you were a instructor or you were super senior or forums yes more accurately this is giving you a such a information at single place the capability of chat gpt is uh, giving you in a vast information for developers as well as we understand yes this will help greatly who are start learning the things which uh, help of this tool adding to their career as a part of uh, collecting an information so the chat gpt is a chatbot launched by open ai november 2022 it's a built on top open ai's gpt3 family the language model and fine tuned if any errors or corrections yes it's a fine tuned and the both supervised and reinforcement of learning techniques are added which neural networks are collecting an information various vast resource libraries and it's giving you a ready made information which is a no copyright so using this chat gpt you just explore it with this course we are going to train you much better you to master in your python skills in very less time the skills and this course will help you to make you master in a few hours only so let's see here by clicking this link chat gpt optimizing language model for dialogue so the how the conversation will go the same way you need to ask chat gpt to collect your required information 
So whenever you comfortable, you are having enough time, you just go through the samples and all these links. So I'll show you in the next lecture how to set up your free account. You need not to pay a single rupee or single dollar for this. Absolutely free to use. So try chart GPT option we have to choose here and uh, creating these options will teach you in the next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn how to set up account with ChartGPT. Yes, it's absolutely super easy technique to creating a free account. So go to Google and hit ChartGPT. In the first link, you just click on open AI website. So the even if you want to get directly this link, you just go through openai.com oblique blog forward slash and chart gpt hit enter to get this page here you may observe try chart gpt yes when you click here you will see this window welcome to chart gpt login with your open AI account to continue if you are already have an account with chart gpt you just log in by pressing the login button to use your credentials username and password to enter over here or else you have to go over here to sign up option you need to choose here i'll tell you a simple technique to create your easy account yes if you are having continue with like a google account or microsoft account anyone yes directly you can click here and enter the google or microsoft account credentials to access this chart gpt account yes you need not to pay for it and uh, it's absolutely free for registration is open and free for membership now once you logged in only you can able to access chart gpt ai tool to conversation can be utilized and uh, initialized now see if you are not having like a google or microsoft account yes there is a no to phone verification is required for sign up if any other accounts okay so i have already signed up with a google account so what i am trying to do is continue with the google and here i am providing my google account which is added to login and access this chart gpt open ai tool see when i click this hurry like uh, the my account see now once it is uh, accessed directly so using how super easy option you want to choose accordingly your requirement and user like by entering of your username and password or using with this microsoft or google account to enter inside the chart gpt login area once you logged in here it will comes this uh, the this window like a chart.openai.com forward slash chart will be displayed to you here this is the page see the cursor is a blinking here we need to we need to ask a questions need to ask questions here to start like a, here it is the right side you may see the mouse icon how we can chart with the whatsapp or sending a message to the friends the same way you need to send a message to the chart gpt ai tool yes based on your query it will understand and uh, it won't take much time it will start giving you the information i'm really exciting to teach you this lecture even we learn completely help by taking the help with the chart gpt only especially for this course i hope it's a super easy and uh, you will be ready with creating your super exciting chart gpt account and continue the session thank you hello everyone welcome back in this particular lecture you will be known what is and uh, how the chart gpt login area the dashboard we can say in few terms so what the area it is and where we can ask a questions and how to use these options to get very like uh, having a less time to making master in this chart gpt tool so let's see here 
every question like whenever we are asking in the left side there is a new chart if you want to ask a new question you need to initiate this button and uh, whenever you want to ask the questions you need to type here okay so this is uh, here we need to type uh, uh, like a uh, Q U E S T I O N questions here. We need to type. Like uh, I'll show you. I'll like, I'll show you very few examples very clearly. You to understand before going to exciting. See few options. We'll see light mode here. Open a uh, discard here or like uh, updates and FAQs. If you are having any more doubts or any clarifications of uh, frequently asked questions in chart gpt yes you can go through see the option and whenever you are not using chart gpt go for log out and secure your chart gpt ai artificial intelligence tool account secure now come to the game so here examples you may see explain quantum computing in simple terms this is the query you assume it if you type the same query here you will get the response very spontaneously yeah, I, I would like to share you more views on chart GPT also. Nowadays, it is a trending and most of the users are trying to getting their query resolutions. So the chart GPT servers are also getting slightly, very slightly slow response. Okay. Yeah, the team is working on it and they are trying to improving the hardware and accelerations of the server productivity to getting as like a, a more uh, information as accurately. All right. Now, see, got like uh, got any creative ideas for 10 years of old birthday, like uh, birthday uh, celebrations. And how do I make a HTTP request in JavaScript? And how do I make a HTTP API, web API in Python? or any C sharp any question you may ask and you may be wonder you may be wonder on it so let me a simple question I'll try to ask to the chat GPT okay so you may also ask what is chat GPT yes no one instructor is not required whenever the learners to be always think that they need to make the like a like a real robo and uh, real artificial intelligence such a person needed at workplace so the work area if he needs to ask any questions to the any other why don't you try to use chat gpt so let me ask a question to this particular chat gpt like uh, what is the question yeah simple program i'll ask like uh, write a write a uh, calculator program in python we have to specify which language to prepare this program otherwise it will ask you like uh, in uh, in terms of like uh, what is the calculator and how the preparation the question whenever you are asking to this chart gpt ai tool to be a little bit clear so if you know how to ask a question definitely a proper way you will get a response so write a calculator program in python just i am asking chart gpt let me i have sent wow it is started here is a simple python calculator program that can perform basic arithmetic operations what you need more than this so let's see i'm not making any wonder here just i'm giving you an idea to implement yourself and know the more logics in less time in less time so see the program is a def it's nothing but function creation a keyword and the name of the function it is a prepared like taking two inputs and uh, if else conditions it is prepared if uh, like a minus operator what the user is a uh, chosen according to the operations here it is given no the operations it will be and uh, invalid operator if it is not other than these characters and this copy you can code and run the code in your code editor you will be wondered yes this course you will be wondered we will i'll first uh, i how i designed this course is i'll give you like a basics what you know and understand then you explore more programs how as many and create your own projects as many okay so practice all the basic things if you practice perfect then you will be master in python very less days I'll catch you in the next lecture. What chat GPT for day to day activities it will do. See you in the next one. Thank you.
hello everyone welcome here in this lecture i would like to show you like a uh, in chart gpt not only the programming in our day to day tasks or in our job profession the requirement of needing of some of the information other than coding is it possibly we can get using chart gpt yes i am also wonder about this so let me write a few things like uh, prepare a simple a prepare a like a resume for one year experience in python that's it or web developer or javascript developer you can specify a few keywords let's see what happens you want to basic like a beginner yes you can ask chat gpt here is a sample resume a person one year experience how the draft to be prepared for a resume see your name your address phone number you have to specify like a taking of any of your microsoft or any word document editor which is uh, you are having in your computer system to take this and correct it as your data as i mentioned as a software developer company name you have to mention it calculate like a location and a date range what the at, at period of when it you are worked designation and deploying scalable efficient software applications and education what is the university where you have did it any certifications if you are having you can put it any references you can put on the, like on references what you need more what you need more than this for your activities so in my mind this is one and another one i'll uh, i'll i want to submit some article to any of uh, some some topic maybe so see uh, write or suggest or explain any keyword you may use uh, write an article um, like um, for python in in 1000 words 1000 words 500 words as you were wish let let me i have asked the chat gpt to explain it something see python is a general programming language that widely used for web development scientific computing data analysis artificial intelligence and many other applications since its creation of 1980s gudo van rusum is a creator of python Python has an a growing popular programming language and most of the other than most of the programming languages in the world Python is known as a simplicity reliability and versatility the language syntax is a straight forward how we can create an english language in the same way the beginner can understand and write the programs very easily the python syntax is also it's a really to be understand as a beginners to be uh, like a uh, write very quickly in less time and it's also purely supports like procedural as well as the object oriented and functional programming techniques making a versatile language is a variety of programming tasks which are added in python once the key features of the python is a like a vast collection of libraries and frameworks Yes, libraries really helps a lot to making your functionality or any of the functionality to you need to add into your program or project. It's a super easy. So go over here in this way. This is an article. It is prepared. What I am trying to explaining you, and feel comfortable and take such articles in your notes. and go through the step by step by like what python can do and what if you are having any other question and uh, explain an article or write an article for data science in 1000 words or 500 words you will get it all you need a computer system which is internet connected and uh, watching this video lectures as well as to interact with uh, this ai tool i hope you will be more energetic to continue this course i think so in the next lecture we'll explain you like a section on words how to install and get and install python uh, software free and pycharm for uh, writing and practicing your uh, python codes and uh, how to initiate these things will be continue in the next lecture on words from the next section
I'll see you there. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn how to create JavaScript basic program using HTML and DOM objects. Yes, super easily using ChatGPT to create these programs. Let's see. Open ChatGPT and simply hit write a basic JavaScript program using HTML and DOM. Now, ChatGPT is created a great program to interact with HTML DOM objects. Let's see here. It's in a documentation of a HTML declaration and HTML page is created along with the IDs and the script program is created and document.body.appendChild paragraph is also given here. Let's see and how super easily this example will works. H1 is a heading, hello world, the JavaScript is embedded with the script tags. See what the script tag is initiated from here to open tag and this is an end tag. Inside the body of HTML it is written. Yes, either here or inside the head like uh, this head tag also we can write the JavaScript. All we have explained in one by one step by step process of JavaScript where to mention why to specify this script code like as an inline, internal or external JavaScript which is convenient you to prepare your script code you way and making a great performance of your apps or applications. You just write it. And here JavaScript is like uh, embedded with the DOM objects. How super easily it is explained. Like the JavaScript code first retrieves the DOM objects using get element by ID, which is an ID of this particular element. Like uh, you see, this is the HTML element of H1 tag. And here it is a specified ID. It's an ID which we can access inside this particular script using get element by id it's in a case sensitive how it is written here it's a standard reserved keyword to accessing html elements by id if it is specified so we are using document that get element by id this heading it's nothing but the id name and you want to assign this text data how heading dot this is a variable and dot text content hello javascript it is adding the like a modifying the text which is already here and create a new paragraph for this simply document dot create element of p tag what is this p tag simply we are creating an element see this like a variable constant variable dot context dot context it's a reserved keyword to assigning or add like appending some text to this particular paragraph. This is a dynamically created paragraph. Document.body.appendChild paragraph. This is the paragraph. It's a append child is nothing but automatically it is going to be adding. This is also built in method inside the JavaScript. How this, the same what it is explained here for chart GPT to you to make a master in less time. So let's see, these all are you require in real world concepts. Take a copy of this code, go to Sublime Text Editor and just try to create a new file and save it as like uh, HTML DOM.html. File extension is HTML you have to use. So take a copy of this code. What the chart GPT is created for us, take a copy of this code and paste into your created new HTML file. So this you have to save it perfectly and right click open in browser. I'm not written any line of code. See, hello JavaScript. This is a dynamically created paragraph. So these things, how it is displaying here in the HTML along with the JavaScript code. Let's see here, come back to our code. See, hello world in the heading H1 tag, it is there, hello world. Whereas we are able to seeing hello JavaScript. So, hello JavaScript developer. I am making customization of this code. See, now save this. Go to the browser. Reload. See, hello JavaScript developer. How it is a DOM object is a manipulating. See, by default, HTML element is written by hello world. It is making with the change of 
this heading we are getting this object into the inside the variable and we are doing manipulation means our customization we are doing what is our requirement using this particular chart gpt it's a super easily without any doubt if you learn basics perfectly what is a constant variable what is a let variable variable like a var variable how we can use and how to call these dom like this html elements as a dom objects inside the javascript see getting the heading element from the dom now this heading element how we are getting document dot get element by id why it is a id so get element by id with the name of the id to get the data and to getting the element information here and we can do the corrections or manipulations and play so one by one you learn all the things basics perfectly and play using chart gpt of your javascript journey I hope it's a very super easy lecture. In front, you will be learn basics very quickly and adding a lectures with ChatGPT, you will enjoy more. I hope. Catch you in the next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this section you are going to learn setting up local development environment before initiating these steps what is javascript we are knowing about in this particular lecture so let's begin here so javascript is a scripting or programming language that allows you to develop complex features on web pages the client side and server side that allows you to make web pages interactive so what you need to understand here javascript is possible to write either client side or server side programming language and it's very lightweight programming language it runs the program and it will uses the browser interactivity in in terms of uh, data transmitting and uh, page loads it's a very lightweight so it becomes it is an a very popular see where html and css are the languages that gives structure and style to web pages javascript gives the web pages interactive elements that engage a user on every time a web page displaying timely content updates interactive of maps and animated 2d or 3d graphics scrolling web like a video joke box and um, data updates if any charts that will be reflect the latest data it will be uh, pulled from the server and it will present you in terms of lightweight manner so this is an a javascript is a very become popular few more stuffs we'll see why it is in so popular and uh, why you need to focus in this particular language so the front end we may see it is an html it's html is a markup language that we use to structure and give meaning to our web page content making layouts and designing paragraphs headings data tables or embedding images videos and many more which we are making like a skeleton for web page so the css is the language especially it's came and popular for styling html pages making more beautiful sites adding more colors to your web page what the html components are there for example setting backgrounds colors font styles and laying out of content in multiple columns and boxes flex boxes grids all possible using css along with these two to adding interactivity will use for javascript 
Now let's see. Interpreted versus compiled language. So the code, how it is going to be run with this JavaScript. See, you might hear that the terms of uh, interpreted and uh, compiled in the context of programming languages. When you are uh, learning the programming language, when you are journey with the programming language, you may hear how we are able to see the output. So here, in interpreted languages means the code runs from the top to bottom and the result of the running of the code immediately you will get. You don't have transformed to the code into different languages. Some other languages may be intermediate, IL language we can call it as, or byte code or binary code. It, we cannot say it. The code is received the programmer friendly text from and processed directly from the browser and it will be displaced there itself will be called as interpreted language. Compiled languages is a, like a programming languages. It will be compiled from one language to another language. Then it will be runs and again it will be converted into uh, system readable language. Then we will able to see the browser codes. For an example, C, C++, Java, C Sharp and F Sharp. These are the compiled into machine code then run by the computer. Vice versa, it will be converted into browser user readable code and it will be displaced. The program is executed from the binary, like a binary format, which is generated from the original program source code. Will be called as compiled languages. The programming language is compiling. Knowing more about JavaScript. So the execution process in JavaScript is a plain JavaScript is going to be done by browser itself. So the web browser receives the JavaScript code in its original text and runs. Most modern web browsers are uses JavaScript interpreters actually uses a technique called just-in-time compilation to improve the performance of an web page. Binary format while the script is being used so that it can be run as quickly as possibly will give the output. However, JavaScript is still considered an interpreted language since the compilation is handled at runtime on browser itself. There is no need to uh, require for, for uh, any other compiler or server. It's not required for JavaScript at client side. See, the differences between server side and client side. What is the difference, major differences? So you might hear about the terms of server side and programming and client side programming. Especially you may hear about when you are dealing with the web applications or web development. So the client side code is runs user's computer itself. It may be desktop, it may be browser, whatever it, it will be runs there itself. It won't depend on any other server or any other resources. It may be like a C, when a web browser page is viewed, web page content like a JavaScript code page, client code is downloaded, then run, display the browser, the result will be displayed at the browser itself. In this course, we are explicitly taking about the client side JavaScript to learn more things on the client side uh, JavaScript functionalities only. So the server side code, on the other hand, that runs the server side, then its results are downloaded and displayed to the browser. Example of a popular servers like uh, popular programming languages like PHP, Python, Java, Ruby, ASP.NET, C Sharp, and many more languages who are uh, which are required to compile at server side. JavaScript as a server side language will be considered when when we are using the modern and advanced technologies of Node.js environment with the AngularJS, ReactJS and Vue.js, these are the server side scripting is also possible using like uh, JavaScript. These are also JavaScript whereas these are the framework based JavaScripts. So this is about what is JavaScript. When you are initiating and starting the journey with the JavaScript, these all are very familiarly, you should know the things. 
So I'll thank you very much. We'll start by setting like a choosing a code editors how to start and initiating the steps. In this section, we will learn with the welcome program. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn code editors. If you are already familiar with any of the code editor, you absolutely start begin with this editor and enjoy yourself to learn JavaScript. Or else, if you are new to entering here to learning JavaScript programming language, you observe here which you are comfortable to start with programming language. In this particular lectures, we are done with Sublime Text Editor. I'll show you all the steps how to initiate from the scratch. We are going to be starting JavaScript journey. Let's begin here. So the first one is Visual Studio Code. This is an editor which is a very most most popular code editor. And you may download from the Google and install it. It's a open source, you need not to buy it. I'll show you very clearly how to download and install this Visual Studio Code editor in next upcoming lectures. So the next one is, this is the one of the code editor and that this one is Sublime Text Editor. Sophisticated text editor for code, markup and prose. So we are recommending and we are prepared with the Windows operating system and Sublime Text Code Editor to writing programs and presenting you on the web browser which is a Google Chrome. Those are latest versions we are used up to date where the lectures are prepared. So learn the things most of the companies are using and following with the latest versions only. Alright, I'll show you how to install Sublime Text Editor and how to write and how to run these JavaScript programs. I'll show you using Sublime Text Editor. So the Atom, this is a Windows version and uh, most of the versions are also supports this editor. So if you are interested, go with this. This is the Notepad++, which maybe it is a like a, this is also, it's absolutely free and open source. If you are interested, you may buy the license for this and this may require to write a programming languages. You need somewhat extent of expertise is required for this. All right. And brackets. This is also one of the most popular code editor in the world where you can start begin with uh, front end developments using HTML, CSS and JavaScript perfectly. Thank you. I'll catch you in the next lecture with the installations of IDK. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn how to download and install Sublime Text Editor. It's a very easy and simple lecture for beginners who are starting at computer and coding, I'll show you the steps to download and installing each and every step, step by step process. Let's begin here. Open Google Chrome browser or any of the browser which you are comfortable. So once you open, just hit sublime text. There is a download option is also here. So hit sublime text, you will find an option downloads. Either you can, you can go directly here or you open sublimetext.com website. See here it is showing simply download for windows. Directly it is showing in a button, simply it is showing like a download for windows. See I told you to install this editor in different operating systems, how it is possible Linux, Mac, see whichever the operating system you need is you can download it and uh, write the coding. So for Windows it is showing like this. 
all right here i'm choosing for download for windows option 2 getting this software so hit on download for windows see it's downloading so once it is download is completed in the bottom you may see just double click or right click and open if it is double click you will get the like a, this window like you need to use the account control press s and see setup sublime text editor window you are getting here like uh, the setup file we are initiating to start installation process so here you will get in a path where to install this software you need not to change anything click next by default it is going to be installed on c drive click next install wow See, it depends upon system specification and configuration to be taken for installation time. Maybe it's a low process and low memory, you will get some time, like a few seconds delay. Otherwise, you will get completed quickly. So, completing submit wizard, you just click on finish. Minimize this. Go to start button. You will see here sublime text here. When you press the start button, you will see the sublime text. Or else, you will find like by scrolling this uh, program files, you will get like a sublime text editor folder and to access from here, if you are hitting this one, you will get directly open sublime text editor in your computer system. Alright, this is the sublime text editor. So, I will tell you how to create and how to start the functionality with the, with the using of sublime text editor. In uh, next lecture, we'll see what are the overviews and how HTML pages will be created. We'll see about it. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn Hello World program using javascript so how to create a project folder and how to start begin with the javascript initiating hello world we'll learn now let's see anywhere in your desktop or any other drive like c d e any drive you may choose and create a folder which is name js project JS is nothing but shortcut of JavaScript. So you learn these lectures and tutorial JavaScript. I'm making a shortcut of JS. So this folder, I'm going to creating one new HTML file. This JavaScript is going to be implemented ultimately using G like uh, HTML and CSS components to embed and play with it all right let's see i'm initiating with my sublime text editor by start by pressing start button and choosing sublime text editor from my windows operating system so here i'm going to creating a new file inside where i'm going to creating this new file in this particular js project directory it's nothing but a directory we are calling it as javascript project so here let's see file new file this untitled file it is representing by pressing file save as save as and go to desktop choose the path js project here you may create index.html index dot not comma dot html this is an extension of html file so the file is created let's see here when i open the js project directory you may see here index so the what is the type of file it is html file so freshly we are created index dot html file with the help of sublime text editor 
this sublime text editor as a code editor we are using for this entire program so let's see in sublime text editor we may write HTML skeleton how simple it is we'll see now take less than type HT and press computer keyboard tab key see when I press tab key how wonder it is these are the lines are automatically sublime text code editor is helped me a lot to writing these all the lines so how simple it is let's see make it big yes now the title I am preparing like a JS hello world javascript okay java javascript hello world program so here and uh, you go to like uh, our project folder this project folder and right click on the file and open with google chrome web browser this is the browser mostly I am using for this course why Google Chrome updated version will support most modern web technology latest features so if you are comfortable with any other browser like Mozilla Firefox or Internet Explorer Edge Microsoft Edge or Netscape Navigator or any other Opera so accordingly you may use which is supports latest features so here I'm choosing Chrome as my browser so click on the Chrome so empty it is showing so nothing I'm not written anything inside the body of HTML page so it is displaying now what I'm trying to doing here let's see very keenly you may observe this is the hello world welcome program which we are based on the javascript first program we are preparing here so clearly creating a p tag which is a paragraph which we can write something and now for this p tag i am giving attribute of id id equal to like a something i may give like it's in a demo my p tag id attribute i am given some value of attribute it is demo so let's see like a something will i get anything refresh refresh the page i'm not getting anything over here so i'm making in my windows r two splitting into two parts so the left part is coding and the right part is development like output so very simply i'm putting in this way now let's see refresh correct so here it's a very easily okay i'll write something here for h1 tag i'll write something java script hello world program oh, yep save this reload it so javascript hello world program when i entered into something like a h1 tag h1 h2 h3 these are the tags from html so hello world program title i have taken so now we have a created like a p tag here to handle to control javascript now see very simply i am initiating with the script tag just type sscript script and by pressing tab you will get this thing in the latest versions of the modern browsers these information the type it is a script or javascript is also not required strongly remember from here to here this is also not required in the latest browsers earlier versions of the browsers and uh, scripts may require that type so the latest one only script open tag and end tag inside the body only I am implementing this one alright so write simply now what I need to write like my first program hello world I need to print with the using of this p 
p tag what i need to do first i need to like uh, access this p tag id which is a uh, called demo the id name is demo so how how i will get it see it's a simply very simply i need to write something here which is document dot get element e l e m e n t get element by capital i d capital b small y capital i small d how i am written here the same it called as in a syntax to be capital letter small letters to be apply the same way all right of of means open and end parenthesis inside you need to write the id of this paragraph tag so this id i am taking and placing here dot inner i n n e r inner html inner html you need to write here all right so document dot get element by id this is an id if it is a name get element by name we can also write these are all the things one by one you will learn very detailed in our future lectures so concentrate here very simply how we are initiating the journey so this get element by id this id i am placing here the name of the id so dot inner html equal to what the text to be assigned to this particular paragraph p tag so here uh, my first my first javascript program all right my first javascript program save it and make sure to terminate the line with the semicolon terminate the line with the semicolon strongly remember this is a highly important every line in javascript will terminate with the semicolon so the text is written inside the double quotes from here to here and with the ends with the terminator of line terminator of semicolon for this javascript programming language now save it and reload the page javascript will there is a no requirement at all for any compiler or interpreters so here browser it, itself will be loaded this javascript and will give you immediately on the output browser itself so save this and on right side reload the page wow my first javascript is displaying here what a awesome really awesome you are getting here so instead of my first program i may write hello world save it and reload the browser in the right side it is in a browser left side it is in a code editor so how simply we are doing a program realistic functionality very quickly so greatly so greatly we are doing here a program with greatly we are doing a program with i am extending like uh, this browser is i am extending i am reducing the output here yes this is enough for us so reload oh okay 100 means this is the 100 percent i am increasing the browser okay so now reload hello world it is coming now let's see very detailed step by step i'll explain again so h1 is an attack to given for heading p tag is used to control this element in html with the javascript we are handling this one so how we are handled so the script tag inside doc like a document dot get element by id this id we are getting p tag id with the what is the name demo and dot inner html what the inner html it is to be present to this particular demo so the double quotes is initiated means 
which is the string we are going to assigning to this particular javascript component so here this text is going to be assigning to this id and it is presenting to the browser let's see how it is if i am using if i am writing any other id based on that id you can call the change the name and uh, you can write the string over here you will get the output successfully i hope it's very easy and simple we'll catch you in the next lecture with the great experience of the new concept thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn variables in javascript so here you need to know the types of variables declaration in javascript and how simply we are going to declaring variables with the prefixed keywords what is prefixed keyword javascript is having four ways to declare variables in javascript programming language so very basically i'll show you like a reserved keywords to be declared as a variable is like where that's a keyword let and const nothing so if we, if we are not donating anything that is also is possible in javascript let's see one by one a simple examples first let we'll see later const we'll see and uh, these are the two are very modern uh, keywords which are uh, reserved for variable declarations so examples we'll see one by one so at beginning uh, in the line i have declared here it is in a where so we'll go with the where so let me write something here about where so very simply to understand i'm writing inside the body only the code statement okay so p tag with uh, id uh, what we can say here it's a demo i'm writing for a p tag and a script tag in declaration yeah here the script tag document dot get element by id we can write to get this this demo like uh, something if we are declared something here some code we need to present something in output in browser no that output should be i'm going to assigning to this p tag nothing but so on welcome program hello world how we written same way will be goes the lectures same way anything it may be dev or it may be p tag table tag anything which you want to interest to change modify on your practical lectures you may try yourself all right within the this uh, script tag let's see like uh, to accessing this html element i'm writing like uh, document dot get element by id see what are the capital letters and small letters the same case sense to you need to write in javascript so here within a method i'm calling which i'm trying to assigning the data this demo this one d e m o take a copy and paste demo dot inner html i n n e r html is in a capital so equal to if i written something here it will be donated to it will be like uh, presented to the this particular id so uh, let's see hello save it reload the output page so hello we are getting here so this one so i am incremented uh, like a page view to get better understand so hello hello i am getting that's really awesome now let's see what i am trying to doing declaring variables so how i am declaring variables using where keyword i am initiating where a equal to some number like a uh, four javascript terminates every line with semicolon so the next variable variable i am taking a or name anything you may write other than other than reserved keywords so strongly remember 
this one I am declaring as like uh, where a, B, C I am taking simply or else if you want to take like a number, a new M also you can take no problem. Okay, so here where A some number I have given equal to operator is using to assigning the value to the left side variable. This is the where is the declaration means it's in a variable and this is the equal to operator is using to value right side which we have assigned the value is going to be assigning to this variable. This variable will store this four number into the memory address location. Whenever we are using reusing this A, the particular variable, the from the memory location we will get that value and will reuse. This is the variable in programming languages how we deal and the advantages of using variables. Variable is same. Variables, variable declaration and variable is same. Values will be exchanged. We may put dynamic variables for a single variable. Dynamic values. Alright. Now, B. Let's see B equal to some other number. It's a 6. So, now where one more uh, thing I'll take like uh, uh, C I'll take A plus B. Oh, great. Where here a plus B I am written here. Alright. Now, if I want to print C, let's see how it is. Okay. So, the total of the total of A plus B. Okay. Or else uh, the total value also we can say that A plus B I am writing. The total of A plus B uh, concatenation I am using and C I am printing. Let's see. This thing is going to be assigning to this ID. The ID is going to be printing in output. So, here we will get. Let's save this. Sorry. Let's save this code file and reload the page. Wow. The total of A plus B 10 we are getting. See, arithmetic operator the arithmetic operator using variables is happening very clearly. How simply we are initiating the programming. So, awesomely we are initiating. Now, where we are used. I will come to the part of where to be used or not. I will let you know. Okay. So, the same similar way. The same. I am not going to be disturbing anything more. So, let us see. Instead of where. I am trying to changing let. Let keyword is on a latest 2015 after it is a let is added in JavaScript programming. So now I am replaced where with the let keyword, let keyword and save it, reload the page. Yes, same result we are getting, there is a no change. Let uh, try to change 6, 6, 6. Save it, reload, 12, wow, using where, using let, we are able to getting the output, awesomely we are getting, I really enjoyed a lot. So now, let's see here, using other like a const keyword. So you have learned till two, one is where, another one is let, now const keyword. This is also to declaring a variable constant declaration. Oh, okay, okay. So, here we need to declare write something like let. Why it is, I'll tell you. Okay. So, C, instead of C, we may put T-O-T-A-L. Yes. So, if I am written total here, remove the C and add total. What it is more than that? Very simple. So, let's see. Save this and check the output. Yes, 12. Uh, so, I want to change this number now. Yeah, save it. Let's check the total. Wow, we are getting the total. Simply, awesomely. So, what you understood? Using where, using let and using uh, something like a const keywords to be used for to declaring variable 
identification so nothing means if you are not given anything yes it is also possible to used browser will understand yes it is a by default let or uh, const uh, variable declaration so in this example particularly you will see the differences between this let and const when important on const keyword usage is you want to general rule always declare variable with the const keyword general rule why if you think the value of the variable can change if it is maybe change you need to use let keyword see here we have used that word like that value may be changes on running of the program so you need to use the let keyword other than you need to use the constant c o n s t const keyword to declare the variable whose the value is not going to be changing or modifying so very clearly we have seen the example a b and total three things are there three things means three variables first two variables are const the total variable is used let keyword so having whose the value is not changing we have given const keyword whose the value is changing we are given let keyword so very clearly i have a given the explanation for this and an important information regarding variables what it is this is a very important like a when to use where see always javascript variables with where let const three things we have seen the where keyword is used all javascript code from 1995 to 2015 so later no let and const keywords were added in javascript in 2015 and words so you better to use if you want to work with your older browser whenever you are implementing a program in using javascript with a old browser to be running then only you need to use where keyword otherwise you better to switch the modern keywords which are added in 2015 which is let and const keywords so happily you work perfectly javascript programs in large scale all right so happily write a program with the variable declarations with the keywords what we have discussed very clearly so i'll catch you soon in the next lecture Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture you are going to learn JavaScript data types. Previous lecture we have learned about variables declaration. To declaring a variable you should know what type of data is going to be assigning this particular variable so let's see here basically very most important data types we are going to discussing now those are the data types are here i am writing the data types of like a string which is in a data type and a text surrounding either double quote or this is a double quote or single quote if we are assigning some text it will be called and treated as string data type okay we have seen something like a hello world program in that uh, scripts we have seen so the data which is having surrounded with the either double quote or single quote will be called as and uh, javascript also most of the programming languages will treat the same it is in a string data type only so now here also in javascript also will be treated as string data type which is having single quote or double quote surrounded with the text now the second one is number number is nothing but integer 
you know like 0 to 9 number whole number is given any as in a data type without quotes singular double quotes will be treated as number integer all right and boolean true or false true or false will comes under booleans and arrays arrays a group of data items irrespective of the data type a group of data items maybe if I am assigning like a name I am taking a single name if names group of people or team how we can take uh, to assign the single variable with the multiple data items yes using arrays it is purely possible so we learn all the steps no problem uh, with a step by step in our uh, future lectures so with the arrays we can take a group of data items going to assigning to a particular single variable with the possibility of arrays declaration and objects so this is an object will be called as like a name value pairs will be there in the objects in javascript these all are one by one examples we'll see in our uh, upcoming lectures anyhow so here what you need to know here what you need to know this is in a plain html i have opened and inside the body i am preparing these things that's it there is a nothing more than that so here let's see first of all we'll see an example with the data type of string we'll see here in one by one separated lectures have been prepared for independent data types for each lecture will give you a clear description in our future lectures so here for uh, I'll take in a variable with string and assigning to the data how this variable I'm going to using our uh, this uh, JavaScript program with inside the JavaScript how we are accessing this variable we are going to knowing now let's see so most of the students you know like uh, this is the p tag with the id the demo we have taken that i think it's a very clear so now to taking this id i'll use for document dot get element by id how i am written here same way you need to write and uh, here it is uh, my id name is demo dot inner html it's a purely case sensitive how it is written same way you need to write line ends with the terminator line ends with the terminator so here uh, what i'm trying to do in some let's say uh, putting double quote and uh, javascript i have added javascript i have added this string this string is going to be assigning to the id which is a from paragraph id this id is going to be assigning this string let's see first save it and reload wow this is the javascript we are able to see these are the numbers so like uh, these are the types i have written no the same display it is don't confuse it all okay so otherwise i'll remove it no problem okay save it this javascript is going to be assigning to this paragraph id let's see wow it's coming perfect now we are going to taking some declaration of let okay uh, course let course equal to taking double quotes always practice with the strings with the double quotes only it will help you a lot in future i'll explain you why it is important in double quote and uh, important in single quote also i'll explain okay so uh, like uh, take uh, java script now save this and uh, remove these things this is a uh, assigned javascript you remove it and just simply put course here course variable i'm assigning to this inner html to getting an output what happening this variable is assigned with the string surrounded with the double quotes this string data is going to be assigning to this course variable using let i have taken okay so this course value is going to be assigning to this inner html document means i'm going to assigning this text into our paragraph it will be called as variable okay now save this and reload the page there is a no change at all javascript is displaying here 
so I'll change the some another course okay I'll change the some another course like uh, let's say Python save it reload wow Python is coming so very purely we are uh, handling variables in this particular lecture how beauty it is so irrespective of double quotes I told you to put either double quote or single quote let's say I'll change to single quote save it yes perfectly refresh reload the page of HTML you are getting either single quote or double quote we are happily accessing so why uh, like uh, these two things the single quote and double quote let's see let's see a simple example I'll show you uh, Python's uh, for B E G I N N E R S. If I've written like this and putting single quotes, if I putting so here it is taking a first fee and it, this is the treated as a it means it says that the string is ending there. So if I, automatically my code editor is saying that something error is there. If I run this, I won't get any output. So what I need to do such a scenarios, we need to put double quotes surrounded to this particular yeah yes now let's see javascripts for pythons for beginners it's taking happily so most cases if you are using double quotes it will be help you a lot if you want if you want any like uh, uh, let's see one more example i'll show you like the surrounded single quotes are there I want to highlight these beginners course with the double quotes then you need to write this way let's save it reload see python for beginners beginners is highlighting with the double quotes how simple it is so accordingly how you need to display your data very clearly you may display your wish all right so whether it is a possible or not you have to check which string data type you are going to be dealing or handling so according to let or const I have clearly explained about let and const uh, e, this uh, variable declaration predefined uh, variable declaration predefined text keywords so use wherever it is necessary let or const these are the very popular and most like modern things all right so we'll catch you in the next lecture with the numbers thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn numbers the data types we have seen previous lecture is string and now you are going to learning about numbers it's nothing but integer data types so let's see very quickly I'm taking like uh, num1 as my variable num1 or num2 whatever it you may take it okay so the number is not require any single or double quotes around that so very simply I'm taking as an uh, 32 is my number so let's see this num1 if I given here so this data type if I given here directly save it and this is you know already if you don't know like uh, let go with the previous lecture you check it I have written all the things save it reload wow 32 we are able to getting so the number without having any decimal point and uh, percentage of four dots you will get very clearly this uh, information in output perfectly so here you are observing now let's see if a number is assigned like uh, let num2 equal to around 20.50 this is called decimal this is called decimals the decimals which is assigned here and uh, this one is number all right also most of the programming languages will call it as integer data type integer data type so how simple it is so let's see why these are the important 
why these are very much important in like uh, learning data types in the numbers so let's see i would say like uh, num1 num2 if i applied like we may call it as like uh, arithmetic operators once we are applying let's see num1 uh, like uh, where is the plus symbol yes num2 if i written in this way all right num1 and num2 let's save and reload 52.50 so that arithmetic operator is applying directly there is a nothing we require so arithmetic operator we we just write down here and we will get in a solution over there in the browser save the code and reload the page you are getting so awesomely we are getting see uh, if we are not segregated number as an uh, integer without surrounding text or double quotes uh, let's see what happens i may put it is uh, like a 20 uh, 22 let's check what happens and i'm using like uh, i have uh, converted these data types into strings all right and i'm making arithmetic operator what happened let's see save it and reload can anyone will expect the answer it may be 44 or something else i'm sorry 42 or something else let's check reload the page 2022 wow what happening here the beauty of programming will identify if we are not identify compiler like a javascript compiler will knows that what happening here so let's see if i am removing why it is coming means if we are putting strings surround the numbers it will be treated as string variable string data item which is assigned to this particular variable so very clearly understood wherever we are applying with the arithmetic operators we need to follow to make sure to put as a number without surrounding either number or decimal point values we need to put something like a 20.50 yeah 2.50 so let's save it now it is making arithmetic operation is functional successfully so numbers are written with or without decimal point whenever you need to write without double quote or single quotes okay now the same here you may apply like a subtraction yes you may put minus save reload 17 if you want a division yes division you can put 8 only if you want like multiplication put the symbol as multiplication save it run it 50 how easy how easy these are the things division also like a divided by percentile yes you may put the percentile symbol zero something more is required no to get in a percentage yeah the same way what you need to do save it and reload the page wherever you want to do like uh, some functionality in the coding and output you need to save the code file first then you need to run the output you will get a clear accurate output so i hope you enjoyed a lot with this lecture we'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn javascript booleans booleans is nothing but very simply like a decision making either true or false values you will get in output so let's see how it is possible to check with the booleans so let's see very quickly i'll take like a number one number two uh, something like uh, where is two number i'll take and uh, here also two i'll take and uh, one more variable i'll take it as uh, something like number three that is something uh, seven or eight save it now let's see very simply how i am implementing boolean over here so removing this removing this uh, like uh, let's simply say um, what i need to write here yeah within parenthesis x like a number one 
num1 equal to equal to oh, num2 yeah is it true or false let's see save it run it wow it is true see the output you are able to see here this is output means it's a true why it is a num1 equal to equal to num2 yeah let's see now how it is possible very simple why this number we have a given value is 2 number 2 only and similarly while well, like number 2 like uh, num2 variable value is also 2 so both are 2 if both are 2 means ultimately the logical expression is true so we are getting it's a both are equal so it is a we are getting it's a true so let's see and uh, if uh, num2 equal to equal to num3 what happens we'll see now so we need to get along with this uh, for that we need to make it as in a concatenation to prepare a concatenation plus plus inside double quotes here i'm writing some break line so after plus i need to implement this method is num2 equal to equal to num3 can anyone guess it whether it is true or false can anyone guess it whether it is true or false this is true i have tell you i have clearly explained you so what about this is the number is 2 is equal to equal to number 8 which is the number 3 is in a variable these the numbers are going to be assigning to these variables these variables we are comparing so this variable we are comparing means it's nothing but this values we are comparing so let's see if i run this uh, reload so first one is true this statement and the second one this statement is not true so it is false very clearly it is saying so how beauty it is so the same way you need to learn many things the boolean expression is as simple as easy to learn the things all right anything it may be string comparison it may be boolean value and comparison or it may be uh, like a true false comparisons anything you may compare with the boolean expressions you will get true false values okay so we'll catch you in the next lecture with aris thank you Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn JavaScript objects. What is object? How we are going to taking as objects in data types, we are going to seeing here now. See, so very simple this one also. So, for object declaration, uh, let's see, quite simple const as in a variable declaration I have taken for constant variable uh, like values. So the object declaration for a person if you take it's nothing but like uh, dictionary items also we can say that most of the programming languages will accept this is called as in a dictionary. So here curly braces it will be used here yeah it's a terminator yes curly braces inside the curly braces const as a variable and uh, name of the variable is person. So the inside the curly braces we are going to be adding here it's a data items like first name last name age color or uh, uh, address pin code phone number name value pairs would be there inside the objects so here first name yeah that equal to like uh, put some colon here yeah colon what is the name uh, John all right make it is comma comma based and last name colon it's a string value again no Perry John Perry comma and uh, pin code pin code yes colon and take the pin code if you want to put number yes you can put the number all right now comma email yes you can take an email yes it is in a double quotes uh, perry at gmail so data items are 
all are written in simply at a single object data items are writing as a name value name with the data item value in a single object it's a single variable we are assigning with the name value key value like a name value or key value pairs we can call it as in this way we are preparing data organization is happening with comma based so how simple it is so if you want to access these things if you want to access these objects how simple it is like uh, this is a person no not fruits yes person dot by pressing dot see all the what the person object is having like a uh, inside key values object key and value it is showing here let me let me see here key value these are the things are going to be displaying when you press dot so the first name person dot first name you will get the first name let's see save it and run it john you are getting if i am like person dot last name you will get the last name so making the concatenation of these things it's quite simple so let's see plus plus i'm taking and uh, inside something uh, uh, is yeah john is like uh, what would be the age uh, email will write person dot email person dot email um, will i run this first let's check for john is uh, reload sorry save this reload yes space if it is required you can put the space reload yes so if you want to make a comma yes you can put a comma over here save it check it what you want to place the information about to display accordingly you may plan it okay and um, having an email and if you want to make like a one more parameter which is like a pin code hmm? Mm, how i can just simply take this plus two this place i'm taking a copy after this i'm pasting here um, his mm. pin code is his pin code is what is that p e r person dot pin code okay person dot pin code let's save it and run it so see his pin code is coming okay oh, save it space reload so how beautifully we are getting like uh, a data for person a john perry so the object by pressing the dot we are taking this keys object by pressing dot you are able to accessing the keys from inside the objects so accordingly if you are having in a group of data a group of data how simply it is accessing one by one if it is arrays we are following index positions if it is object just take a write down with the person name like a person like a variable name by pressing the dot you will get the values in the output how simple it is maybe group of persons maybe group of fruits cars vehicles any object in the world in real world data real world data with a real example you try to put and practice more and more to get more realistic examples with the more experience you will get in this i hope it's very simple and easy lecture so try to practice more and more we'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn how to write javascript internal code so it's a very simple lecture to understanding where we are implementing the code is important so let's see in here it is in a body i'm just earlier we have written inside the body which is called inline code so here also i'll explain in the later lecture what is inline and the differences between among these three so here we are going to concentrating internal javascript so the internal javascript we are going to implement inside the head there is an html it is there no inside the head we are going to writing this javascript code so for here i am going to writing script tag 
and here text type so I told you like a type text JavaScript it's an optional if you are using earlier old browsers legacy browsers you need to specify this attribute type with text oblique JavaScript otherwise it's not required for the latest modern web pages web browsers so here when we are dealing like writing something this script tag inside the head section will be called as internal JavaScript coding so here in in the body what I am writing here to making dynamic paragraphs we are going to creating now using JavaScript let's see a button click I am preparing so the button I am taken and this button I have to write like on click event so let's see so here to accept this on click event how we need to accept let's see document dot add event a d d e v e n t add event listener s t e n e r yes add event listener of there is a single quotes dom content loader dom is nothing but document object model okay content loaded if the doc like a dom object is loaded we need to take a comma with the method we need to initiate here so these going to be implies these going to be implies a particular functionality to implies means take a equal to and uh, this one and now we need to initiate open and end braces all right here I told you like uh, in every JavaScript line should be terminate with semicolon so this block I have uh, terminated this way and here I'll write see whenever the page is loaded we need to handle and control the HTML elements which we are going to be dealing so this is the event listener when I am pressing button it should be catch what happening something here in the using document object model content is loaded it will be ready to accept the event clicks so now let's initiate the function so all the things you will learn one by one no no problem at all create um, para yeah, yeah, ph paragraph my function name so in this function what I'll write here in this function basically what I'll write here um, you can you may use a const uh, or let or where which is a variable declarations you will be learn in upcoming lectures so para for a paragraph I'm taking as a para document dot create so C R E A T E create HTML element we are going to preparing here so take it's a P tag only I'm creating if you want to make a div tag like a div element or a table element or break element anything whichever you want you may change this uh, HTML element okay so now this pair this one this pair dot which text content text content what the content to be present there I may write here uh, uh, you click to create paragraph you click to create paragraph this text to be there in this particular created paragraph okay now this to be append to our body so document document dot body dot append document dot body dot append child this is the para which we have taken as a variable I am adding this method append child method 
and terminate with the semicolon and now let's see the function which I have created why the function is created here function will be created and using for the purpose of reusing the code while we are entering into the functions you will be very clearly know many details regarding this all right so now see one more like a uh, variable I am declaring using C O N S T B U T T O N as a buttons multiple any time n number of times I may click this buttons so buttons I am taking and document dot query selector all this is a method Q U E R Y query selector all query selector all what is a query selector all button which is a button which we have already creating trying to creating here so here I will write this particular event this particular event like on click event I will add inside the button so let's see once I uh, like a query selector will identify where the button is pressing someone it will be listened here the click event will be listened so terminate this line and using for loop statement so const of button button of buttons so many buttons where are the buttons this one how many clicks if it is clicked it will be reading by using for loop and one by one it will be created by the like uh, this button this events let's see for and inside the for block what I need to write here button dot add event listener add event listener click comma uh, like uh, create paragraph the function which we have implemented this one create paragraph and terminate now the blocks are clear now the block of code is clear yes for loop is clear yes now I need to create a button event which is on click on click yeah see these are the like uh, events which are available in JavaScript it's going to be displaying here on blur on close on play these are the events click events when when we are pressing button some event will be raised means it will be go to send an instruction to the function these are the built-in functions built-in events which are already available in JavaScript we are ready-madely using these events that's it okay so you should know as many events to learn with the built-in functionality so according to the learning knowledge you will work more efficiently in JavaScript so on click event means we are going to be pressing button that action is going to be provide this on click event all right so the on click and create paragraph function we need to call this one so I'm taking a copy and paste here that's it save it and some text to be display at uh, outside on the button so save it and refresh nothing is displaying in the button button is creating here if I am saving this and I'll reloading the page it's an output this is an output for JavaScript internal program so when I'm I need to something to be display here so C L I C K click to create a para p tag also we can write okay click to create a para I am written so save it and reload see click to create a para it's display if I am pressing here what happening let's see 
like uh, this the code is written for the purpose to creating more paragraphs uh, let me check yeah let's see here add event listener capital letter L we have to take here yes listener so how important to write JavaScript you need to know how the method is implemented here with the capitals and small letters very much pretty case sensitive in JavaScript so now this event listener add event listener method I have implemented here with the capital letters only now just save this and reload the page of output check with click to create a paragraph let's check here wow you click to create paragraph see this is the text only we are getting now if I click if I click it's a program which is implemented using JavaScript like uh, in this area if you want to create button or you want to create table or you want to create any box anything you may create by clicking the button only even uh, like uh, you can create uh, like uh, n number of items in JavaScript so how pretty beauty using JavaScript interaction with the data so greatly you may put like dynamic way in upcoming lectures so very clearly you may understood this lecture is specifically designed to understand and know the writing internal JavaScript inside the head which we have implemented the coding will be treated as internal JavaScript so within the body only having HTML element with the online with the help of on click event in JavaScript we call the function and uh, these are going to be creating repeatedly see refresh reload so once the logic is implemented means always it will comes all right so i'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture, you are going to learn JavaScript external file. With the external JavaScript file, how we are going to integrating with our required page to run JavaScript, which is a very most popular to maintaining external JavaScript. You are going to learn here. Let's see. Earlier example we have seen very simply to writing internal JavaScript. So the same code, save it and reload the page. See, click paragraph it is going to be creating. If I am refresh, so everything is a reloaded page is readily available. So awesome now. Now let's see very simply what I am trying to doing now. So these internal JavaScript code I'm trying to making move to external file. Same example only we'll see, but this internal code I'm shifting into external file. Even there is an like a little bit integration is only required. How to add this external file that we are going to be seeing now. Rest of the things, nothing is required. So here some of the few important things are there which we are going to be understanding and uh, listening. So let's see. First of all, I'm creating a new file, which is a called, which is a called name called script, script.js. You may put external JavaScript or uh, any other, which is a script means like JavaScript means .js means we are providing JavaScript file. You need to understand very clearly. If you are having validations, or uh, any like a front end different different type of javascript files also you may create externals module wise user wise form wise yes it is possible to create so here to understand better understand i'm creating script.js only so save this yes script.js is ready come back to index.html form and see inside the script tag inside the script tag I'm making cut 
copy and cut here and moving into external file script.js file I am shifted the entire code from there to here let's see how I am writing very simply all right now uh, like uh, what it is uh, needed here what it is needed here means it's a completely external no so this document dot add listener event uh, this is also not required here okay that is also not required so remove the line this one also it's not a dom object so remove this perfectly function and every on click event to be created a button no for the purpose we are implemented here it is in a for loop statement save it javascript script.js file is ready now come back to index.html so here script tag it is also written no so remove this one also first we will write from entire beginning so inside to call the external javascript file to here here in html what we need to do let's see inside inside the head tag only inside the head tag only i'm going to calling this external javascript file using script script type javascript like i told you like uh, latest modern browsers are not required if it is there no problem okay so here what you need to do src source it's an attribute called src press tab you will get double quotes equal to double quotes automatically so you need to write the path of the file which you are going to be importing so my path like a name of the file is script.js so write down here sse ri pt dot js should be give very clearly the extension of the file so the script it is nothing but javascript files only it will be received from the external source in my file directly i placed in my project directory which i have created so i am directly writing if it is the file is 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 maybe placed in any other directory inside the project yes write the directory path clearly where, where it is available so you won't get any errors on while executing the program so here what you need to understand very clearly one more keyword defer keyword i am using see this defer keyword i am using here why the defer keyword is using and how it is an important to write here you will learn all the things in future lectures okay defer keyword on script tag will help us to download javascript code in the html page successfully all the external javascript file which is having in a javascript functions methods or anything will be imported and downloaded to the current html form and then it will be ready to works which is the html dom objects or elements to be given any performed actions very clearly strongly remember to use this defer keyword is very very important to get all the functionality properly using javascript files now what i need to do now we are uh, written and importing like uh, integrating of the external javascript file this is the external javascript file we are importing and using this html form now what i need to do nothing save this and reload the page click here to create a para wow so i'm getting i'm getting a paragraph very 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 easily why and how i am getting this para why and like uh, how and why i am getting this paragraph you just simply see create a paragraph functionality is uh, accepting this external form and differ keyword is helping to differ keyword is going to helping to getting like my functionality of this external file so how simply it is done so reload click here 
a paragraph it's coming uh, this thing sh let me re remove yeah save it and reload yeah so we are getting very easily we are getting how many events are rising accordingly we are getting the paragraphs are going to be creating so try yourself and uh, prepare a great external files and uh, uh, call to integrate all you have to do is like uh, writing an external file javascript code and importing the thing you need to concentrate here this is the lecture objective is main you know like a uh, uh, important thing is that one so script scr file name which is the javascript file name path defer keyword and writing the buttons within, within a body this is the lecture object i hope it's very simple and easy to integrate external files we'll catch you soon thank you Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn inline JavaScript. So here you need to observe very simple and very easy. What you need to observe here. So earlier we have uh, completed this external file. So now very simply to making this code, just taking of this code, I am moving into our html form so how simple it is like uh, let's see taking a copy of this code and uh, we need to establish a script tags inside the body tag only so what we need to do remove this tag from head tag which is the external file so here i need to initiate this script tag so here inside the script i need to write this code that's it save it very clearly save it and reload the form save and reload the form click here to create paragraph why it is coming two and three these things have you observed anyone see it's a very simple and easy thing javascript browser may have javascript browser may have already javascript code earlier uh, like uh, used click events and functionalities may run back end so you need not to worry about at all all you need to do control plus f5 to reload with the clear catchy or clear all the history or browser histories and all from your browser and check your functionality with the javascript whenever you are facing you are not receiving accurate result from the script code so very clearly this is a troubleshoot is important for javascript learners so this is which is a written if it is an inside head tag will be called as internal and if inside body if we written javascript code with the script tags and all will be called as will be inline and if you are using any external files will be called as external javascript so all you need to advantages see first let me see like uh, see save this and reload creating paragraphs yes it is creating so here you may to like uh, write and uh, perform your expertise by writing external javascript files only which is a written external javascript file if you are prepared anywhere in your project very easily you may write and apply all right so try to practice external javascript files whenever you are writing internal and adding this script to in external file to apply wherever you require all right i wish you good luck thank you
Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn JavaScript async and defer keywords. So let's see how we are going to integrating external JavaScript file to our HTML or any other programming language files where we need to use external resources of JavaScript programs. Let's see the advantages and uh, features which are available with these two keywords. There are actually two modern features we can use to bypass the problem of the blocking scripts while loading the pages. So these are the very very latest and modern things two keywords are introduced in JavaScript. So which are already we saw on earlier a defer keyword to using and integrating and loading in a page. So let's look at the difference between these two. Scripts loaded usually the async attribute will download the script without blocking the page while the script is being fetched. However, once the download is complete, the script will execute which blocks of the page from rendering. Rendering is nothing but getting or pulling. You get no guarantee that script will run in any specific order. So there is a no guarantee. It is better to use async when the scripts in the page run independently. The script is there and the script is not dependent to any other DOM object which is depending only for a specific HTML element then you need to use async. Async attribute to import the external JavaScript file. So here so the scripts of the page run independently from each other depending on no other scripts in the page then you used to use like a async keyword to import the JavaScript files. Scripts loaded with the defer using like a defer attribute will load in a order they appear on the page. How you've written order 1, 2, 3, 4 line wise importing links you may prepare like a script tags. Based on the order, the differ using the differ keyword, the script will be downloaded like loaded in the page which you have opened or accessed in your browser. They won't run until the page content has all loaded, which is useful to your scripts depend on the DOM being places. They modify one or more elements in the page. So async, let's see a simple uh, visualization I have given here. So script tag, async keyword, maybe start or end also you may write. Source, which is the JavaScript vendor JS and JS three scripts I have introduced here. Similarly, using differ keyword, instead of async, we are using a simply replacing with the differ keyword. That's it. This is the writing style. And now important points to remember while using async and defer keywords. So async and defer both instruct the browser to download the scripts. Both are a separate thread while the rest of the page, the DOM objects, etc. Which is downloading. So the page loading is not blocking during the fetch process. Fetch process means external page JavaScript file or program is there which is going to be fetching and downloading into the current HTML page or current uh, web page. It may be HTML or it may be ASP.NET page or Java JSP pages or any other page. Scripts with async attribute will execute as soon as the download is complete. This block of the page does not guarantee any specific execution order. So scripts with the differ keyword attribute will load order by how you have written the step by step files from first, second, third, the same way it will fetch and download. Once it is a complete, like everything is finished to downloading, then it will be execute. If your script should run immediately and they don't have any dependency, use the async keyword to import the things. If your scripts needs to wait on parsing depending on other scripts, then DOM being to be placed. 
load them using differ keyword put their corresponding scripts orderly so the browser will understand and execute to avoiding this downloading and fetching issues clearly you will get accurate functionality in your program javascript program i hope it's a very clear explanation i have given for async and differ keywords which you comfortable you need to use and apply in your real world programs thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn very clearly about two strings how simply we are going to using strings in javascript how we are going to communicating with the javascript elements to html elements let's see very simple i think you have already familiar with the string data type when we have completed in the data types so here also i'm going to explaining more detail information about the strings we'll see now let's begin let's see here with the variable i'm going to assigning here uh let's take either let or constant you may take here so the first name taking double quotes or double quotes or single quote anything john i'm taking and uh, let uh, last name perry or mary john mary yes any name you may take it so first name and last name here it is written okay either single quote or double quote anything is possible to prepare now let's see first name if i given i'll get the first name straight away here in the output it's a john wow awesome so how we are going to be concatenate taking double quotes and inside like a, let's say like a, take a plus plus symbol inside put double quotes take a space uh, simply last name that's it let's reload john mary it's coming if you need one more variable here you just add in between the elements of these two plus plus with the string items which is going to be concatenating the things many and you will get the output with the very simply the string displaying it's not specific to double quotes I have told you already and single quote is also possible to get the output all right this is called very clear string formatting and now and now i'll give you like uh, one more information over here to get like a uh, uh any like uh, anything you want to make it is like uh, something break lines if it is a uh, john it is there mary if you want to put in second line what you do just simply write br you can add it you can add it br inside the this double quotes that's it john mary if you want to put one more uh, uh, this uh, name or email or something what you do let email something uh perry at gmail or hotmail.com so very simply i'm taking this copy of this code and at the end i'm putting an email over my requirement done i'm able to getting here so how simply it is uh, i'm able to getting great now let's see a simple thing i am putting something like uh, something like uh, notes i am putting here very greatly all right like uh, a b c d some text i am added so what is the length of this notes how should i how would i know easily so how i know that uh, text which is added inside the notes variable the string length notes dot l e n g t h it's a built in method uh, terminator so let's see reload four it's a string 
like a length it is displaying so if i added more save it reload oh 11 automatically it is calculating the length of the string so if i added something save it reload wow 21 if i added more save it 30 great yes where we will use this method where we will use this length method for a particular string counting yes particularly we will use in validating the names which is entered by the user how much string he is entered maybe names minimum requirements of three it's a universal standard so at least if the user is not entering minimum three digit in the name first name it won't be acceptable okay so very clearly you just verify just i'm giving you a built-in method in the next lecture we'll see the formatting and again we'll see the methods how we are going to applying uh, built-in methods and the dynamic variable declarations we'll see one by one in the upcoming lectures i'll catch you there thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn string formatting so here a very simple lecture which is prepared here so let's see very quickly i'm taking like a name as a variable and i'm adding here it's a my name here and let uh, like uh, name is over and uh, it is like a first name i'm taking it as a f name let l name i'm taking it is uh, some name my name l name is and let um, address i'm taking it is india yeah three variables i declared very clearly so how i can able to uh, see these three variables very simple these are very simple how let's let's see f name and uh, space taking plus plus symbol yeah inside double quotes if i add it and again like a uh, l name and again i need to write uh, i'm going to making a concatenation of this group of data with the dynamic variables like a uh, address i need to place over here and terminate at the end of the line save it now this id is going to be displaying our output perfectly so this page if i am seeing in output in my browser this is the browser output i have placed to save a time lot of time i have opened this page already in the browser just reload it see shaker metla from india so how simply we are making like a javascript to string which is a formatting now if i placed here like a let pin code as in a pin code five zero 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 let's save it and here what i need to do taking this copy and uh, let's say paste uh, yeah pin code that's it save it reload the page pin code is adding here so clearly if you want to write something any plain text these all are the variable text only we are preparing so we are prepared an output structured output perfectly here and you are able to seeing here for an student you may assume it so if i am the name is changed to something like uh, ahmad and uh, md and uh, something like uh, uk put something like a pin code some changed save it data values only i have changed here save this and reload all the output parameter is same this is the dynamic parameters and the variable values which we are going to be using in string string formatting all right and also you may write you may write breaking code lines how we can how you can let's see you can put like a backslash you can put like a something if you put something here it's an enter like or else it's in a backslash 
yes you may put code break only yeah code break for the purpose you may put like a backslash to enter the code over here yeah reload so nothing you are getting so some few of the features are available while uh, writing something like uh, i'll show you with the dynamic variables let's say uh, something hello perry if i return and putting backslash to entering over here let's save it reload hello perry is displaying so the commonly you are able to see in a single line in the output whereas code is splitting with the backslash means you are making multiple lines you can you are breaking a code you are ultimately you are breaking a string into multiple lines these things are possible in string formatting when you are deal with the large text and whenever you require to making a splitting into your code lines yes used to backslash and uh, slash n slash t also possible to write like a slash n means here you will put n and here you will put t these options you may apply to write your programming all right i'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn javascript string methods why we require to learn string methods and uh, if the method is readily available if you if we know how to use these built in methods how simple to write a programming language let's see many of the programming languages will have built in methods like string so which are already available in programming language by default uh, which you are uh, writing javascript so how to use it if you know and writing to solving many problems with the help of this methods like uh, it will help you to write quick programs like a quick functionality you can using these functionality of methods and making your own quick and uh, solving solutions in your problem statements in your javascript will help you to making more like uh, expertise in javascript program so let's see one by one we'll see now string how we can make the slices first we will see slice method yeah slice method what do you mean by the slice method yeah this method so how we can apply this slice method in javascript we'll see slice extracts a part of a string it's nothing but a bread is making independent like a small small pieces would be called as it's a slicing of a bread either one any one you can once the slicing is done any a small part from the whole bread you can make it out and you may use it so with the help of such a option in a whole string of javascript like in the string using slice method to making cut and pieces of this string and you can use which particular piece you need what you need to require here the starting position and ending position is required to slice the particular area of the string and you can use it how simple it is let's see very simply we'll see like uh, how we are getting a simple slicing things in this particular string we'll see now like uh, inside the script same thing which the output i'm going to assigning to this in this javascript element is going to be displaying it p tag so inside the javascript i am preparing the statements maybe you may write the program in inline internal or external javascript anywhere you may prepare the output would be the same so avoiding the confusion i am preparing here itself all the examples all right let's take 
let's take like uh, fruits yeah let's take it's a fruits so here what we need to do like uh, something like uh, I'm putting some double quotes and uh, apple banana kiwi and orange these fruits are here now what I'll trying to do I'm making what I'm trying to slicing this particular whole string I'm slicing whole particular uh, this particular string how it is let's see it's a very simple built-in method we are going to using now fruits dot slice S -L -I -C -E, slice method within the parenthesis you may put some for an example phi comma uh, around uh, 15 save it and 5 comma 15 the range which would be like a 5 comma 15 characters from 5 to 15 characters how it will be sliced from the whole string this is called whole string where the initiating of double quotes and ending with the double quotes it will be called as whole string let's see now so this is the slicing option I have given inside the slice method so let's refresh the page okay so banana first comma and banana is getting an output if i want only banana i'll uh, make it from seven let's see i'm making my conveniently i'm making seven yes banana only so this if you if i don't want this comma also so what i do i'll reduce one more character seven to fourteen reload save it yeah now reload okay so make it thirteen save it reload okay so the comma is also removed and eliminated so how simple it is so this particular banana item only i'm getting outside by slicing of the front part and end part so the positions i have given where to start where to end so this way you try to prepare your code very simply and very clearly now the next method we'll see the now the next method we'll see what is like a substring substring is also very very important substring is also very very important in real time like a real time terms of use so here you may observe instead of a slice we may put like a substring here yeah we may put here it's an a uh, fruits dot sub string substring of the same thing what slicing is happened to do the substring will also do the same thing if i put like a 20 we'll add more characters save it reload so kiwi is also coming so making like a something a characters from 13 onwards 20 means it will give like a kiwi fruit only so accordingly substring also most of the cases substring when it will be used date format you want either date or month or year only such a time you need to write substring very clearly in real world applications many times you require this substring method so strongly remember to get all the functionality which is required to get more information with the help of substring programming now let's see by seeing like a very simple information like uh, uh, something is there for uh, making like a replace okay so the replace we need to write something more uh, functionality to be added over here uh, replace are there i'll write more things you need to which you, which you need to explore more helpful for replace uh, P L S E. replace yeah replace method and uh, uppercase okay uppercase is a method and uh, lowercase is a method you need to try to practice these things to learn like why replace is required if anything you want to replace from the string yes directly you try to apply this method 
and uh, similarly you need to write to write like uh, uh, what i can say that uh, upper case as well as the lower case these things also very important when you want to present uh, some data to somewhere else it's very helpful for you and one more thing concatenation it's called it's a uh, method name it is concat so this i'll explain you now so the concat is a uh, method which will help us like very like very very importantly why because um, adding strings in multiple adding strings appending and concatenation these are very important hello uh, first for this i'll write like uh, str1 string1 i'm taken uh, string2 i'm taken okay hello developer okay so now what i am trying to doing let uh, final let final will take and uh, these i'm trying to doing str1 dot concatenation method with the empty space i'm using like what it is str2 that's it terminate so the final i'm going to print here final that's it now let's it let's run it save and run hello developer you see the output how it is similarly if you want to make it more productivity more combinations you may create let uh, one more str3 variable and uh, add some data with the final you may add concatenation very easily how simply it is let's see uh, let me write uh, let str3 hello developer um, welcome hello developer welcome so str3 how i can add here just simply make comma str3 that's it save it reload it hello developer welcome that's it you may use a space here or somewhere else yes you will get an output so beauty so the concatenation is very very important while you are presenting the data in output where you are preparing reports or any print to like a print formats such a time multiple dynamic variables you will get from different sources while especially using joins in such time you need to gather all the different parameters at single place there if you need to accumulate the things and uh, in a single column if you want to present the data such time the concatenation will help you greatly so try to practice more and more these methods will help you greatly I'll catch you in the next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn how to manipulate DOM objects in JavaScript. With the help of ChatGPT, I'm going to explain you how to get a source code complete program source code and how to use in our programs using dom objects how we can get an output with ease by using custom methods and making customization how super easy let's see a step by step process in before earlier stage i have shown you very clearly how to create an account of chat gpt so using this chat gpt account you just simply write a javascript program using dom objects so the string program using javascript with the dom objects why i am taking on every output we depend and we'll see in console output more advanced users they will work with the real time objects of browser so these dom objects if you understand and if you get see the direct output in the output yes you can work with the real world
problem statements by seeing an output on time. So let's see these chart GPT here it is in a given a script program that using DOM objects manipulation using strings. Let's see here directly these are the things are written by chart GPT. So JavaScript if you clip this like a click here for copy code absolutely free to use. So as you know that HTML element is initiated for HTML page and here are the complete script code which is a title script is initiated which is an internal JavaScript and the function the method which is a manipulate string the method name itself it is created manipulate string if you want any custom method you just create by yourself and here it's an input string where it's a declaration of it is given where or let you can take it and document dot get element by id this input string as you understand very clearly which is our this input string either label or any other input text box or html element it's nothing but html element id so here you have to take and the output string what the output it is going to be making like a, it's an empty string it is taken and input string dot to upper string it's in a built-in method from javascript which is in a to upper case it's in a built-in method to changing case sensitive from lower case to upper or any other cases to upper case only so append this string with the dom object how it is appending see these here it is an available and this dom objects the text which is a plus equal is nothing but this particular string text is going to be concatenating or appending to this variable so this is an empty string it is a declared at the earlier now once it is done what we are doing this dom objects let's see this output string variable is going to be assigning to this dom object by using document dot get element by id which is a clearly specified case sensitive so get capital e element by capital b or and capital i so how it is written the same way you have to write or else you will you won't get proper response in the output so get element by id of output string where we want to show this output string here is an a p tag id this is an output string what we want to get in the output so dot inner html dot output string this is going to be assigning to this dom object now let's very clearly we will see like a, a text box is taken and as an input string enter a string and a manipulate function this manipulate on click event is going to be this button on click event is going to be calling manipulate string method this is what we have created our chart gpt is created here and it is going to be values making and it is making into the like what it is going to do input string dot upper means what whatever string you are given it is going to be making upper and assigning to this along with this string is also appending this string is also appending means last it is going to be adding and dom object it is showing so let's simply what i'm trying this is what i have explained till now the same thing chart gpt is also explaining you chart gpt is also explaining you so easy to understand this i will show you copy code copy code go to our sublime text editor file new file take a new file save this first you have to save this control s to save this go to desktop i have a javascript folder see dom underscore there is a no spaces you need not to use on file names or variables or folder names anywhere in the program specifically this is the basic syntax and understanding there is no spaces if you give in a space browser will understand some other keywords are there for to read or relate when you are specifying path with the space names then you will face a problems got it dom string i am giving simply dot html which is the extension of the file is html we are working so now take a copy of this code take a copy and come over here into the browser paste so the paste is done and all the code is written by chart gpt i'm not written a single line 
So by taking string manipulation is in a title. If you want to make the custom, it's a how super easy. It's a so very, very, really super easy. So now how to run this? Just simply right click, open in browser. Wow, string manipulation using DOM objects. Enter a string, here it is given. Uh, simply I'm giving uh, capital H E L L O hello just to manipulate wow hello it's a lowercase I have given first letter is capital rest of the lowercase but it is given like a H E L L O is all or capital why it is coming all or capital see this built-in method we are using what the text we have added input string it's an input string what I have added and uh, manipulate once I click the button so this button when I hit on click event what it is doing it is moving here to the function and it is appending the text this value is going to be assigning to here if you want to check it how where it is the text is coming or not yes you can check it by using alert wait it is called debugging it is called debugging alert with this input string what it is coming here so let's check it Yes, here it is in a terminate. Save it. Just go to here, reload the browser, something like a HELLO manipulate. So let's see what is the given here. Alert is messaging is making. Yes, the same text is coming here and it is showing an alert. Then it is stopped. When you click OK, then the continue the process. When you want to accurate result data, what you are given is going inside or not anywhere you may put alert and check the variable status what data at present in this stage it's a highly important for advanced developers to making controlling your code by your own so i hope it's a very super easy lecture to practice more and more if you want to add more dom objects it's nothing but like a, it's in a document dot get element by id this object is nothing but see this id get element id means when you are putting something here it's an id and this is a html element when you are specifying as an id or name also there yes here most cases this uh, javascript like a chart gpt program is given for id so whenever it is taking html element id names specifying of elements you have to specify get element by id if other than if a name also there for html elements if you want to take a name as in a dom object you just take like by capital n a m e rest of the letters first letter is n is capital rest of small letters so capital n a m e document dot get element by name you have to specify the what is the name there at html elements you are specifying to accessing and controlling that element yes that is done Similarly, if you want to assign the data, see there is a two options. It's an input string which we are collecting by value. And what the data we are going to assigning to the HTML DOM object clearly using JavaScript. By the way, document.getElement by ID, this is the ID and this ID name we are specifying here dot inner HTML. So the same object like a variable which we are used to collecting data and doing manipulations and assigning the data and assigning to the HTML DOM object. And it is going to be reflecting this is the ID what we have seen in the output. So whenever you want to reload, just reload the browser. Any other services are not required for HTML. Simply you just go to the open the browser and specify the path. You will get it. And Sublime Text Editor directly right click open in browser. That's it. Let's see here, I am a programmer. So let's see, manipulate, I am a programmer, alert is there. I am a programmer, specifically it is in a capital letter, it is inverted. So it's a alert is reboot. So save the document whenever you want to try, otherwise it won't come. So let's reload. Hello, folks, manipulate, hello, folks. And now alert is not no more. So how super easy string manipulation is doming like using DOM objects with the help of chart GPT program I have run here. So try to practice what you want and chart GPT will help you to write more programs and will help you in real world program. Hope you it's a really helping and a great lecture for you. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.
Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn operators in JavaScript. So operators are many things are there which are prepared independent operators specific lectures where it is required in this section. So the operators would be called it will be plays a major role while defining decisions and comparing the things and logically we need to apply our logical brain to making in a decisions to which to be go in like a next step or to be future step like a back step to be decided using these operators so let's categorizing these operators of arithmetic assignment comparison logical so here we are going to seeing like arithmetic operators plus minus multiplication division and uh, incrementing and decrement also we are going to cover in this lecture so let's see very simply i'll take like a uh, variables over here using let a equal to some tradi and uh, let b equal to some number 30 so how it is defined let c equal to or let tot is called as total as a variable equal to a plus b terminate so tot is a variable is going to be storing a data of sum of two numbers a b so this total is going to be assigning this particular javascript element so let's see all you know that this element is nothing but this paragraph id we are going to seeing an output just save it and run so the 50 we are getting here very successfully so how simple it is we are getting if i am my number is changed something like a 40 save it reload some 60 you will get automatically the arithmetic operation is happening inside while compilation of the program so how simple it is let's say let's say subtraction let's minus if i put here instead of plus here so save it and run so minus 20 why because this is the value is uh, lower than that so if i put 60 to the above save it and reload it's a 60 it is getting really awesome so the similarly we may apply like uh, you may think it like uh, division yes save it and run 1.5 and similarly if you want to like uh, make it uh, multiplication is done yes multiplication if you want to make it i'll make it small numbers then we'll see the multiplication uh, so the multiplication symbol it's a star save it run it 24 how great it is and now if the power value if we want to see how it is possible making uh, like uh, into into that's it so let's see if i take like uh, let's uh, a only it is there assume it a only it is there assume it uh, like uh, the variable which is a uh, a yeah my to the power of 2 save it reload 36 so the power we will use without spacing without spacing we may use star star and a space and a 2 so there is a no space between these two stars means it is a power value so a to the power of 2 so what is the a value it is a 6 6 6 jar 36 so you are seeing like a, this value is an output so the same way we'll see for a like a plus plus operators let's say very simply plus plus operators let a equal to 6 over here and uh, next to that line if i write a plus plus terminate what would be the a value over here what would be the a value just remove here yes let's check the a value reload so the a value is incrementing by plus one see a plus plus is nothing but it's a post increment after the a is loaded here here it is the a value is incrementing by plus one then what happening the value of a is going to be printing assigning here and it's a printing it's a seven so let's see these operators very helpful 
while using loop statements. It's a post increment operator a plus plus I'm used. Mostly we can use i plus plus the same way. It's a a plus plus the variable I have changed uh, changed the name of uh, x like uh, a. So the similarly minus minus operator. It's a decrement. So let's check with the decrement also. Save it and run. It's a five. One value plus one is a value is a minus. It's a going to be it's a plus plus means it's incrementing the value by one. Minus minus it is incrementing the value by one. So if you donated before after where you are placing this operator, it will be treated pre increment, post increment, pre decrement, post decrement. This will be you will observe while you are writing more and more programming languages. All right, and JavaScript is also follows PODMAS rules or BODMAS bracket of multiplication, division, and subtraction. So the same thing is applied here also. For this, you test yourself by writing many of exercises. So let's see, let A, what would be the output, we'll see now, save it, we'll get the 250, okay, where it is applicable the BODMAS or PODMAS rules will be same will follow in JavaScript program. Let's try to explore more examples using different different parameters, whichever you require here, place it and test yourself. Directly, you may write arithmetic operators. I'll catch you in the next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn assignment operators. So let's simply, this lecture is uh, making a very simplification of this lecture. Let's see. First, I'll explain you what is assignment operator. So the assignment operator will help us to know very easily this equal to will be called as assignment operator. Very simple. So this operator using we are uh, assigning data items and data values to a variable. Clear? Now let's see. With the help of assignment operator, how we are going to adding a values to a particular variable keep on adding the things maybe happens let's see how it is possible let act like a equal to 10 means we are going to assigning a value of uh, 10 to the a variable so if i see the output we are getting 10 as an output like value data value so this is the code part area like area this is the editor we are seeing like output the browser most of the persons who knows like uh, from the beginning who are observing the lectures clear now let's see if I am keep on adding more five or numbers anything a plus c equal to some number like uh, from more four I'm adding let's see what happens plus c equal to is also as an uh, like an addition of uh, assignment operator plus c equal to so let's see what happens now reload 14 it is loading how simply it is if I'm adding num like number like uh, eight or something 18 it would be so this assignment operator will automatically add the values to the existing variable value. Similarly, the operator subtractor is also the subtraction. So the minus, save it, reload, 2 we are getting. So that subtraction is happening from the already existing value which is already available inside the variable. Similarly, we have in a more options of the multiplication yes instead of star we need to remove like instead of a hyphen we need to remove and put the star mark and reload the page 80 8 tens are 80 so the existing variable its place this is also assignment operator and division yes it's also applicable yes greatly we are using and uh, more if you need more exploring the operators of the 
uh, arithmetic operators to making as an assignment operator you may try yourself all right we'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn comparison operators in javascript so what are the comparison operators why we require to use these comparison operators in programming language so here when we, like uh, many times we need to compare the data to one to another data then only we will make the decisions if the data is possibly is coming in a proper way or not then only we'll understand in dynamic way see some example like uh, few of the applications are only eligible for female or few of the applications may be eligible for only male in such a criteria we may put whether it is a male or female application we need to test in our application in coding so how it is possible using this comparison operators highly it is important and easy to compare the things and strongly remember while comparing the things you need to sometimes you may compare with the data sometimes you need to compare with the data type as well these both are different data which is matching and data type may be different so most of the examples like uh, equal to equal to operator type comparison less than greater than not equal to these are the components we'll try to apply one by one over here let's start here the session with a simple equal to comparison okay let i am taking a equal to 10 let continue with the same example so here i may put here my simple functionality with a uh, like a comparing with the a equal to equal to 10 a equal to equal to 10 what happens now let's check it so run this true see the variable value which is going to be equal to equal to 10 here it is an assigned value if i am changing 10 to some around 9 save it reload false so the expression is making while comparing with the value with the variable it is throwing true or false boolean expression i am requesting from the particular javascript program so here the comparison is making now let's see very simple a very very simple uh, what i'll try to do a equal to 10 while we have seen the true correct let's check true so if i am putting a equal to equal to equal to 3 equals yes it is true why it's a specifically it is a data type also it will be verifies this operator okay this operators will check with the data as well as its type what is the data type it is so let's see if i am putting surrounding some singular double quotes now let's run before we have gone the result it's not true now save it and reload now it is false why its type is not matching here it is in a string we are comparing with the number 10 so it is false so if i put here also in a string variable save it run it again we'll get true why because string to string is matching so particularly this is also very highly essential important in real time program so strongly remember whenever you deal with the data with the numbers you are comparing and uh, either string or its data type also you may be check yourself all right now not equal to not symbol exclamatory mark will be treated here and not equal to 10 it will be it is a equal to 10 and here are, we are comparing with the not equal to let's see what the result will come false if i changing the number something else as user input reload it's true which is not matching this value is not matching to here so we are getting the boolean expression of true okay so very easy these all operators you may apply very easily in your program okay so let's see um, i may put here called 
less than less than you may directly write the less than a less than 10 is it true or not reload yes it is true if it is greater than what it would be it would be false that's it a value is bigger this value is smaller if it is a less than means uh, left side part is lower and right side part is bigger so we are getting true false accordingly so with this without using space greater than or equal to less than or equal to also you may apply the conditions all right you may apply the conditions so if i put 10 now it is come become true it's become true maybe less than or greater than 10 10 means yes equal to whenever we are applying greater than or equal to less than or equal to the comparing with the two things one variable value with the one static value we are comparing these two things all right in this way you can prepare your comparison operators very greatly in your program next lecture will catch you with logical operators thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn logical operators in javascript so logical and logical or logical not these are very important to learn in programming language so the and symbol would be either and or and and we may write similarly or we can write or else two pipes we may write as an uh, like uh, two pipe symbols yeah straight lines we need to write or else and another one we need to put like not operator logical not or uh, we may put not in mode so this way we can write the logical operators one by one let's see begin with the end operator logical end true 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 false 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 true these are the options are going to be apply while using logical operators if you need more information regarding this you may check with your uh, like um, operators which are logical operators you may check in your notebook all right now let's check with the end operator now let's begin a and t let a equal to 10 some value have taken and let b equal to something like uh, 5 i will take lower than that all right now how i'll apply end operator over here very simple we have seen like comparison operators earlier instead of comparison operator like uh, what is the operator yes let's say less than 10 a less than 10 let's see what happening here false it is coming so make sure to put like uh, um, make sure to put something I want to put something like a true so what happening here it's a false so I'll make it bigger value it will comes true now save it yes now it is true so how I can compare with this uh, second variable let's write let's write like uh, inside let's write inside uh, using and and y it's a b here b mm, yeah less than or greater than less than or greater than you may put like a uh, 8 so 5 is lower value now yeah simple line yes we can see so now let's see what would be the statement you will get true why the true why the true you are getting if I am given this statement of number is 4, we will get like false. Yes, we are getting false. Why? See, very detailed explanation I will give you. A simple example explanation, you may take it. Later, it will be very easy for you to understand. Okay? So, the, this is the first statement we are writing here, comparing with the two statements, with the two variables. So, the first one is, a less than 20 yes it is a bigger number it is there for a value and 20 we are comparing so it is a statement is true clear and b it is a 8 it is given less than 8 so b is a 5 so two options 
are making two statements here and here two conditions are true. So end operator what it will say when the two operators are like a two uh, conditions are true end is automatically give you in output it's a true. So ultimately you are getting true. So either one condition if it is false ultimately the result would be false. This game like uh, these challenges will play using end operator. Okay. See if any value if I am changing like either one condition if it is making false it is going through output ultimately it will give you a final result it is false. Okay. So now end is over. Now or operator what happens let's check by making two pipelines. Save it and run it. It's also saying true and if I am making four which is a once we applied in the end operator we have a get the result of false there. So now what happens let's check reload it's a true only it's giving if I'm making uh, like a 10 both conditions are false then we'll get the false true what happens either any one condition if it is true ultimately the result would be true okay either any one condition is true ultimately the result would be true if both are false then only it false if both are true even it will be true. So this is the OR operator. Using OR operator, you may make uh, more possibilities. You are not restricting strictly to true. Clear? And very simple, very, very simple to apply NOT operator. So the combinations you may write many, you may write many combinations where NOT operator, what happens? Just see like uh, this is the true statement we are able to seeing in logical operator with the R. In front of this, in front of this, I am applying exclamatory mark means it is a not. So when we are getting true result output, whatever it the result may be true or false, whatever it the result using logical end operator, logical R operator, irrespective to the operator. So you are getting some result. So what happens now applying not operator opposite result you will get if you are getting true with the logical operators operators maybe end or or if you are applying not operator it's quite opposite result you will get. So with this result we are seeing true while applying negation of a not operator let's see I'm saving the code and reloading the page. So the false we are getting. If I remove this not operator, save this, true, in either conditions of or like uh, end operator or operate uh, or operator, whatever it may be the operator you may apply while you are applying for the negation, you will get negative result like a uh, opposite result. How simple to understand this uh, logical operators. So need more practice need more practice to have a great experience while applying your own uh, programming logic implementations. You will get more and more while uh, if else statements, loop statements while applying of these all the operators. All right. All the lectures are how like uh, the basic lectures are going to be applying in the in front of lectures in the programming especially. Okay. We'll go to the next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn if statement. Very clearly, we are going to initiating this uh, if statement lecture here. So let's see, we have a basic skeleton of uh, HTML page where we are going to be writing a script tag inside a body. Here p tag we have prepared. So these p tag we are accessing by writing the JavaScript element of get document dot get element by id. This ID is nothing but paragraph ID. So by pressing dot inner.html, if we are assigning something to the particular uh, JavaScript program output to this element, it will be uh, assigned to this ID. This ID is going to be mapping to this paragraph tag and we'll get in browser in the output. So this is the code part and the right side part, it is in a browser. 
which is the code we are going to see the output very quickly to save more time. So let's see by writing the if statement very simple statement. So writing if that's it. This is in a syntax we have to define here. So if like uh, simply take like a new date method. This is the belt and predefined method dot get h o u r s hovers there is a method called hovers is less than 18 if it is the this uh, like a condition if it is written in this way here we are writing something like uh, this document dot get element id i am going to specifying inside this if block yeah here I'm going to writing this block of code. Now, what I'll write here, let's say a simple statement I'll write for like, uh, good evening. Okay, so let's see. If I run this, if it is 18 below, it will be call it as, it says that good day, not good evening. We'll call it as good day. Okay, below. If it is more than 18, we can say that uh, it's a something else like a good evening, such a information we can get. Like by default, we'll get like a good evening, good evening. All right, the paragraph tag is having this information. Okay, that information paragraph is having. Let's see. Save it. So good evening, we are getting. Now, based on the if condition, it is mo making move to good save it and reload so it is a below 18 only the hours when i am uh, like uh, doing in a lecture recording it is a below hours only so we are able to getting a great uh, response with the javascript it is going to be verifying like uh, it's a verifying like uh, below to 18 hours so it is making good day how it is simple or else We'll get like uh, maybe we may put like uh, this time is maybe one hour. Let me check the one hour. It's almost it's uh, afternoon. I'm doing this. So reload the page. So the good evening as it is the paragraph text only here it is. There is a not changed. So if it is maybe 20, we'll get again the good day. Save it and reload. So what happening here? The if new date is getting and get hours means this is the current system. My computer system date is hours it is getting from the date function it is getting hours which is comparing is it under less than or greater than it is comparing here with the 20 number static i have given so this way similarly like a if condition we can write very easily in this way let's say we can write like a else statement also very simply that i will show you in the next lecture very simple okay i'll catch you in the next lecture Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, we are going to extending the same program with else statement. Let's see how simple it is. So here, what I'm trying to do in this new date and get hours I'm making into a simple constant variable. We are making more productive. Const like take hover that equal to what I'm trying to do in just removing from these two cutting and paste. So terminate till this. So this hover is having what the hover is uh, we are getting to storing in this area. Okay. And one more variable I'm going to defining here. So what it is, uh, I'll define it before like uh, comparing with this hover, H-O-U-R. So earlier code is uh, and this code is also same where whenever you are trying to writing something to compare, you need to define any of variable that value first. Why it is required and important? Whenever you are dealing with the variables, you have an uh, ample of opportunity to validate the variable very clearly. So the validations and all you may write very accurately. You may write the information over here. All right. Now, purely we are making it's in a dynamic way. So let's see. 
uh, if I run this, same will get an output. So good day we will get. By default, it's a good evening, no? So the good day we will get. Let's see. Save this and reload. So we are getting good day. Perfect. Now, what I'm trying to doing, if I want to make it as else condition, I need to write this the same statement. Instead of doing that, what I'm trying to doing, I'm making like a letter um, message. Let message, uh, I'll write something, a message for here to display. Okay, that message for this, I'm trying to making remove from here, remove from here. If else block I prepared, open and end parenthesis, I have a created here. Perfect. Now I'm taking this statement. So now what I'm trying to doing, if our less than 20, these are going to storing this our time here. If the I am verifying the if condition, if our is less than 20, should be print one statement. This block of code to be execute and run. If not, if the condition is false, it should be go to the else path and it this block of the code should be print. The decision, how the decision is going to be making here, how clearly it will understand. Let's see. So what happened, how we need to map the using this uh, uh, variable, very simple, message equal to, uh, we may put, message equal to, we may put, good day, okay, or else, uh, message that equal to, we may put, dynamic, purely the dynamic way we are writing now. So this is uh, like, a, we can put like a good, uh, e -V -E -N -I -N -G, evening, and this message variable is going to be mapped here. Oh, sorry. Yes. Directly, we can map the message what is available. So, now let's test it first quickly. Uh, reload. Yes. Reload. Save it. Reload. Good day. Now, I am making it is in a 2. Making it is in a 2. Save it. Reload. Good evening. So, this condition is false. It's going to be code is automatically going to end else part. This block of code is blocking like uh, executing or running. This statement is going to be assigning to this message. Hence, we are getting this message in output with the paragraph tag. So by default, it is given good evening. So maybe you may thought that it's uh, coming. So I'll uh, make it uh, one, two, three by default message. So if I refresh, so we are getting this good evening only. Clear? So if it will verifies, if this will this block will be executed, this message will get. Like let's see, if I make it 20, this block is true, and immediately the code will be executed in if block. Now it will be ignored automatically. If the condition is false, then only it will be entered into the else block. Save it. Yes, good day. So awesomely we are getting a particular accurate result. In the next lecture, we'll see if, else, and if. How the possible things are there. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn if, else, Elif, like a three statements we are going to learning now. If else we have seen from the previous two lectures. Now we are going to adding one more condition with if else. If we are having to compare one more condition, how it is possible? If we want to compare one more condition, how it is possible? Yes, there is an, a possibility is there for this hover we are going to comparing with one more condition like a good morning, good evening and a good day segregations we are doing now. Okay, let's see how the things are possible. So here uh, it's a 20 it is there, no? So we'll do like uh, less than 10 we'll take it first. Okay. Uh, yes, if hover is there, no? H-O-U-R hover is less than 10. I would say like it's a good morning. Okay, the construction of the program, I'll remake it. M-E-S-S-A-G -S message equal to 
मैसेज इक्वल टू गुड मॉर्निंग और राइट इफ आवर लेस देन टेन इट विल से गुड मॉर्निंग सो एल्स एफ लेट्स सी एल्स सो वी नीड टू कंटिन्यू द प्रीवियस स्टेटमेंट दिस वे दैट्स इट माई प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट इज रिटर्न राइटिंग इज कंप्लीटेड एल्स एफ इफ इट इज एल्स एफ again i am verifying this condition straight away i am not sending to the else part that is the purpose we'll create if else if else if you we are having more conditions you can continually write that else if else if else if else if blocks till how many levels you need you may write yourself all right so see the good morning and good day and good evening so now if i run this let's check If I run this, it's a good day. So the time is now. It's a based on the time it will go. Or else, or else you may put like a comment this line, and uh, yeah, we have to play more things. No, const that equal to uh, maybe like eleven. Uh, I'll give it eleven manual hours. I'm giving here. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Const h o u r. It's eleven. Okay. so this variable value manually i am given instead of using uh, system date time why because i need to check all the conditions specifically so this less than means uh, we need to give like 8 we'll get like see save this and run a good morning we are getting this one if uh, below 20 means if i given 19 what is the message we'll get now good day i need i think so save it reload good day wow how the code is going to be executing step by step and if it is uh, like uh, above 20 means uh, 20 also we can give yeah, above 20 means 21 yes save it and run the code good evening this block of code is going to be executing if whenever we are calling the code based on the condition which condition is making true that block of code only it will verifies if the uh, first block is a uh, false second block is false third block is false continuously it will check till the true if nothing is there it will straight away it will go to else part so this way you can prepare decision making systems coding very perfectly so i would suggest to you rather than writing if else statements if it is a simple code like a decision making system you may prepare the if else statements only one or two group of programs group of logic if you want to add to run a particular statement use switch cases that we will see in next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn switch case statement how simply we are going to preparing these switch cases you are going to know in javascript see switch case is in a specifically specifically designed to run a block of code which code block to be execute you will define a particular value or expression based on that input user inputs straight away switches the expression and uh, it the particular block of code only will execute it won't verify like uh, such as statements uh, which we have written like uh, if else these things not at all so we'll see how these things are possible to verify one by one like a uh, six expressions will be evaluated once only based on the expression evaluation it will runs the value as expression to be each case you have to specify if none of the case is matching based on the input of user expression it will be goes there in default so each case is going to be have an once the code is executed it will be break and it will terminates the uh, execution from the switch case and it will go out okay in this way we'll see about the switch case code like a uh, code blocks in javascript will write let del take it okay it's a variable i'm defining a simple uh, variable and writing the switch statement a keyword swit switch 
switch is in a reserved keyword inside the switch i am writing like uh, getting something an hour uh, anything you may take maybe uh, like uh, hour uh, you may write like uh, here also you can take uh, hour let uh, h o u r hour equal to new like a getting date date method by pressing dot get day get hour or get day whatever it you want you can take it so hours i have taken um, day already which is assigned no so how we will go now any anything we may use it um, days of the week like uh, day shall i take or what it yes let's 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 uh, switching the direct how what's the day it is uh, taken later we'll try to make the modifications of it okay let's switch here it is a statement it is now open and end parenthesis you need to write inside the switch cases you have to implement the case statements okay now case statements is like um, case we need to write and uh, something like a zero colon write enter and colon it is not terminator it's a colon and uh, day one variable we have a declared above no so the day it would be sunday terminate and bracket terminate this is the case one now the case two case one 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 to be right so the day something same would be repeated like uh, same would be repeated in this way we if we've written the same thing same case i am taking a copy and paste over here i'm changing the name to case one so it is monday save it okay monday tuesday wednesday thursday the same way like uh, we will take a copy of these cases so one case is over put enter paste paste okay enough to write i think so it's a two it's a three so monday after monday it's a tuesday u e s tuesday t h u r s thursday so three cases zero one two three four cases i have written here okay now but like uh, if we want to see what is the day today if i want to see the what is the day today how i can implement this how i can implement this let's see this is also very simply uh, we can get it like uh, after the day break it is there given uh, this day i'm going to print in our here i'll print it uh, like let's see simple statement i'll write today is with this uh, i can concatenate with the this variable that's it this variable i'm concatenating so let's see first save it and run it first wow today is thursday it is coming so according to the date it is today it is coming something like a, it's a date get day so today it is a coming like a three i think the case is printing like a three we are getting so based on that it's giving an output of uh, output of case three zero if it is added no so the monday if it is taken it will be according to you have to change it as uh, how the system is uh, taking from your uh, sys computer system according to you need to choose the code and uh, uh, which block is going to be assigning and how it is running you have to define it okay so now to extending this one how the break is working how the like a uh, default is working we have to extend it like let let let's check it let's simply we can test it after the break the cases i'm going to adding one more is d f a u n t default with the default what happens like a day um with the default day equal to oh, double quotes yeah mm. 
just information purpose i'm giving like a great day okay default it's in a great day i'm defining if nothing is coming to switching the expression over here nothing is coming so by defaultly switch case will going to enter into this particular area okay so why this is a very important switch cases why these are the very very important that the sp spaces may require may not require up to your wish okay so why it is important means if you want to make a like a functionalities which is a functionality is a commonly available in your system and you need to use very quickly without making any specification of condition directly you you have in a provision to switching the code one place to another place such time you may implement switch cases very greatly all right so it will be very helpful for you to run with this default and break keywords it's a fully qualified javascript switch case statements all right so this you know i think this is the element is going to be assigning to this uh, paragraph and hence we are getting an output over here if you give in a space you will get it all right just check it and let's uh, test yourself and uh, you will get accurately the output let's check if i am removing this information this information if i am removing save it reload nothing is coming if i given directly like uh, some zero let's check what happens reload it's a sunday is coming if i am giving directly like a uh, something switch like a uh, two manually hmm? save it and reload tuesday it's coming so based on your system oh sorry 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 based on your system date time things it will be accept your inputs i hope it's very simple lecture try to practice more examples with the real world data catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here this lecture you are going to learn how to create decision making system using html dom objects it's a very simply i'm trying to asking chat gpt to get the real time source code without writing a single line of code so practice basics perfectly once you done the basics just simply you ask a chat gpt to prepare your code and take a code and paste into your html page and use in your program as regular code so let's see i just asking chat gpt to write a javascript if else statement for decision making using html dom objects yes if i am not specified html means here it will give you like a console mode project so specifically anyhow ultimately will use in html dom objects where you are using web development so what chat gpt is supporting for me here is an example for javascript statement that uses html dom objects for decision making so let's see here a simple html page is created with input html element button and div element for result so here how super easily it's created for a script i'm not written all this you have seen like a chat gpt open ai tool is created for myself how great now here it is a taken two variables using constant variables which is for button and result now let's see how the code is going to be and it's a script ending and body html here it is a given very in this example we have an html page with the field of input type text id my input button my button all this what here it is taken it is explaining you a step by step once you understand how chat gpt is creating programs for yourself and how you can easily customize yourself don't know chat gpt how human intervention is required so what the customer requirement is based on the requirements and label names 
and the input types if you want to change how super easily you can change it if you want to add multiple items in the page with the same functionality how super easily you can add it by taking a copy of paste why don't you try today in such a examples more and more with the practical real world scenarios so let's simply see here here it is a given the javascript is embedded with the script what it is the script this script which is we know that it says javascript which is the script we have written inside here in this particular lecture it is javascript it retrieves a button result of the dom using get element by id which is in a document of it's in a document object model which is a html element we are specifying by id means this is an id see this is an id html element id and id what is the name we are using according to respective that particular element will be act so super easily here it is given then event listener is added to the button using add event listener so add event listener means let's see here the button here it is given my button and this is the my button is calling here and button dot add event listener means if any event is happening this button dot add event listener is a built in functionality inside the javascript you need need to you need not to assume it it's a built in functionality yes javascript is also having vast library to making you simplify your working environment record you just simply know more library functionalities and methods and quickly done your real world requirements for your project so how many these functionalities if you know then you will become a master very less time so here you just observe here how super easily it is like uh, once it is done when the button is clicked the function inside the event listener is executed or running otherwise it won't anyhow you know that functions function is a piece of code or a particular structure of code when you call the function then only it will execute otherwise it won't execute any programming language not only scripts so within the event listener function values input fields retrieving the data by id or value whatever it if else statement checks where it is given it's a making of decision making we are asking using if else statements if this or this if else if this more condition if it is there you can specify to extend the block using lf if you have a one more condition if you are having yes why don't we put it yes we'll try to put it one more condition let's check see just take a copy of this code go to the sublime text editor file new file if else just simply i'm saving a file if else dot html so the file extension i'm saving dot html if you are using any other programming language you use the same take a copy of this code take a copy of this code by using click the copy absolutely free chat gpt is creating there is a no royalty free and uh, copyrights you just take a copy and use it so once it is done i'm not doing anything here just control s to save right click open in browser check input just i'm giving hello just i'm trying to giving hello check input input does not match open ai or chat gpt3 why let's see the code let's see the code input it is verifying here it's very clearly it's verifying open ai it is given or not or chat gpt3 is given or not just i'm taking this open ai take a copy just take a copy save it and now here you may observe here very clearly and here you just take a paste open ai or else you can type it no worry check input yes this input matches open ai and very clearly if you want to check the number how it is possibly you can check it 
yes it's a here very simple and more accurately you just make more conditions here let's say i'll explain you a step by step body it's given like a three html elements one is the input what is the text box we have seen here this is the text box and the second one is my button and the id is my button this is the check input button and the id result what we are seeing in the output here it is an id result so the button document dot get element by id here it is a specified the id of html element by id we can access this button document dot get element by id result why this div element id we are getting so it's in a button variable and result div variable two variables we have taken inside the script to controlling html objects so now button dot add event listener click when we are click the button when we are just typing something here when we are click the button event to be raised we can call it as an actions so add an event listener to the button the event like input element of the id my input when you click this function is allowed now my input means what you know that this is a my input means it's in a text box what the data inside the text box it will collect here to assign to this variable so how document dot get element by id my input means this text box id what inside the data dot value is nothing but what inside the data is going to be that data is going to be assigning to this particular input variable so this variable data is ready now performing the decision making so how if this input equal to equal to equal to means it's in a completely along with the not only double equal to triple equal to is nothing but identical equalization means along with the data and the data type also it will be verified here more accurate equal to equal to is only will compare equal triple equal to is going to be identical it's a data type also it will be verified so is it low open ai or not if it is a, is a same what is the input it is result dot div, div dot text content what is the text content here it is inside the input so the input matches open ai similarly gpt3 if you want to make one more is it possible super easily we can make it shall we try it now yes for this what i am trying to doing see here just hit and enter and come back here else if now we can write here and open it and curly braces yes now you just try here very super easily we can write yes on format base we have to prepare it now here just like uh, input variable what is the input variable we are collecting the data is equal to equal to double string what shall i give like uh, java javascript any name you want to compare yes you can come and compare here and now the inside the curly braces like uh, the result same result div this variable already here like uh, taken text content which we are going to be assigning here the input matches javascript terminate every line should be terminated with the this option right now yes here it is not simple equal to it's a equal to means assigning the data identical equal to perfect save it just take a copy of this javascript take a copy of this javascript save it every time you have to save it reload the page now paste the javascript check input the input matches javascript i am extended the program how super easy this is simply you can extend if else statement elif using elif to number of cases number of permutations and combinations you can add in your program without doing anything by just understand the program how super easily if like if else statements are going to be works then you just simply add how super easily you can expand your program using chat gpt along with the dom objects i hope 
this chat gpt will help you more and more i understand and along with this practice it will give you more kick ass and you will be become a master in less time try today with more examples and practice very well i'll see you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture we are going to learn a very simple lecture which is an uh, control flow statement loop statement so here why loop we are trying to practicing now so why we require to use loop statements most of the familiar programming languages all will follow in the world while do while for loop and like for each these are the loop statements only we'll use so here while loop is using to execute a block of code multiple times same statement is repeatedly will execute and uh, runs here if we have written any condition till the condition is satisfied loop will continues and iterates we call it as iterates basic html page is taken over here to understand very simple example and the paragraph id here and the script tags are inside the body only i have written to write here the code and practicing very well in the showing the output window this is in a chrome browser we are going to seeing this the browser output here so let's begin with the syntax and writing the while loop statement very simply i'll show you very simply i'll show you the while loop so while writing the while loop how we need to write let's say maybe like uh, we have to take a variable i equal to initiate value of 0 okay so while is a reserved keyword while is a reserved keyword we need to write method open and end parenthesis i less than or equal to you may put your wish i less than 10 inside the uh, parenthesis i have added i less than 10 so i need to initiate the block of code while loop block of code which is like uh, open and end parenthesis so it is done so what it is here while i less than 10 uh, i may write like a very simple statement here so one variable is required for myself like uh, what i can write statement no mm. string name i can write yes name so something i need to like a uh, concatenating everything uh, on every time the number is uh, i'm going to printing the number i'm going to printing so the number is the number is uh, the i we can add here yes the i and terminate so this name i'm going to using inside the loop or outside so i'll declare here let name equal to empty string so whenever you are using loop repeatedly the something like variables you need to define a variable double strings these are the empty strings means you are making this variable always empty while the code is entering here then it will be used here to assigning something all right now let's say don't run immediately don't run any one why because why less than 10 here i have defined and why it is printing when is the loop is entering if the condition is true it will be entered inside the block and it this code is going to be execute now i it is less than i is initial value is 0 so it is a condition is true it is going to be printing here and again it is come back to here and verify i the same value is 0 only so infinity loop will create so what we need to do now we have a learn something incrementing of uh, i value by using i plus plus on every iteration loop will run and uh, first it will be verifies and enter into the block it will print then it will go to here it will be incremented by i value by plus 1 so it will be incremented means initiate to zero means it will be converted into one then it will verify here its i value one less than 10 satisfied it will print again it will be incremented means i value two 
in the same way loop statement will till run till the value is reached 10 so let's see that values are going to be printing here so this name i'm going to assigning um, the name is i'm going to assigning here yes save it and this i you know this id is going to be applied for paragraph tag very simple lectures okay save it and run it oh i'm sorry so what we need to do now i need to take something a break line either start or end position so i'll write here we are save it run it wow the number is zero one two three four how many iterations are there if i am putting here it is a less than or equal to so we'll get 10 also save it reload yes 10 if i am making i value as one i value as one save it run it from one onwards it will initiate how beauty the program it is how simple it is that is an important so now let's see by making i am making a very simple multiplication like uh, one two one two twos are threes are this the multiplication table is there no so let's see how it will be done very easily very very easily so let uh, what i need to take one more variable i need to take let n i am taking equal to uh, something five table i'll write so how i am constructing this very simply you may observe so n as a variable so the number is making here and uh, putting something uh, we need to put like uh, concatenation is required here so plus plus i'm taking and inside n i'm adding okay first i am printing 5 5 into is required so 5 into means uh, taking double quotes 5 into okay so save this and run it first okay five five ones are how much five twos are how much so here after i we need equal to so make the plus after i we need to make the plus like uh, i'll take a copy of this code and after i i'll paste it so equal to is required here so adding equal to i'm sorry it's a equal to after equal to uh, after equal to we need to concatenate uh, save this run it nothing will get why because incomplete code incomplete code so after i what we need to add here um, the number n into i yes n into i that's it is it i yes this is i so number i n into i save it run it wow the number is 5 into 1, 5. 5 twos are 10. 5 threes are 15. 5 fours are 5, 20. So, how simply we are preparing multiplication table using while loop. If you want to make 20, up to 20 levels of this while loop, you just change the number from 10 to 20. Save it. Run it. Wow, it's extending. If you want 100, 200, check it. How many times your loop should run? You define the number over here it will runs i hope it's very simple and easy lecture we'll catch you in the next lecture with the do while thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to know do while the differences between while and do while is major important one thing only. That is, while loop will verify the condition first, then it will be entered into the block of code. While do, do while, first it will enter the block of the code, then it will verify the condition on the while. So how simply we are going to changing these things, let's see, very simple. So these while I am making cut from here and here I am pasting. Alright, now it is a terminator. Okay, now let's check. Here I need to add do. Oh sorry. Uh, here I need to add do. Mostly my program is over. 
so the text number i and i plus plus then two let's run check run and uh, check this uh, program see same thing will be get in output same thing there's no change at all so what happens here what happens here first it will enter into the block of code first it will enter into the block of code let's check i may change like i value it's not 12 where it will execute or not let's check yeah change the condition only i it is 12 so first it is entering directly the code and again incrementing the number of uh, i value then it is verifying it's a fail the condition and loop is executed like terminated how simply we are uh, prepared this uh, do while so the do enter the block of code and uh, verify the condition if it is fails it will be terminated if it is a uh, i value is a uh, 2 save it till 10 it will runs till before below 10 it will runs so this is the way we can prepare the do while statement in javascript the same logic will be applied for many of the programming languages. So we'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn for loop statement. So here for loop is also a loop statement which will runs a statement repeatedly executes a particular block of code till the condition is satisfied. So the execution while iteration will happens. Loop statement will iterates means circle how the circle will runs the same way loop statement for loop statement also will runs like a statement one statement two statement three so on it will goes where we can call it as the statement one two three we'll see by writing the syntax and all let uh, text i'm taking a simple text to be assigned something where we need to reuse inside a loop statement okay for writing the for let variable i equal to zero i equal to zero terminate it is a called like statement one and i less than 10 this is the conditional statement is 2 and i plus plus on incrementing we have applied like a while loop statement how we have written uh, after the statement printing i plus plus incrementation of the value on each iteration the same way here it would be added so now very simply as we observed as we observed for loop a block will be entered over here so what we need to construct inside the block very simply this text message i am writing plus equal to like a putting something like a, the number or the value is whatever it you want whatever it you want to put something uh, i we need to present no so the i value only will put yes and after i we should require like a some break so how i can write the break making concatenation i and here we can put like a, a br tag otherwise uh, we'll get like a continuously till the end we'll get it so this text is going to be assigning for this variable save it run it number is 0 1 2 3 4 5 how we have seen in the while loop the same will be applied here so let 0 initiating of the loop by default it's a let's 0 so i less than 10 till the below 10 it will be the condition if it is satisfied then the loop will terminate then i plus plus when it is entering this will be treated verified and it will be check here and it will enter into the block now immediately once i0 it is printed again it will goes to here i value is incremented by plus 1 then again verifies the condition it's a incremented like a plus 1 means it's a 2 i value verified if the condition is satisfied again it in this statement is going to be printed so 2 is printed again it will be verified i increment the value i plus plus means i value is 3 verified and printing now the 3 is printed 
so on till 9. Why it is 10? If it is the same i value is 10, less than 10 means it's the condition will false and it's a fail the condition. So the loop will terminate here and loop will exit and uh, so we have seen the till 9 the numbers. So these text I'm going to assigning to our HTML element with the p tag. So we are getting an output accurately at the end. So how simply it is, how simply the lecture is going away. So I hope it's very simple and easy. Similarly, we'll see how to run uh, like uh, a group of uh, uh, array elements, a group of array elements, how we can check. Let's see. These are the very simple. Let the text I have taken here and uh, text not required now. Uh, constant fruits shall I take or uh, yeah, fruits I will take within uh, here I may put like a apple mm, banana kiwi n number of fruits you may write three I have written and one more I'll write mm, pine okay so how I can read this const like a fruits one by one using for loop statement that's very easy i equal to zero let i equal to 0 is on a default like initiating value I'm taking here or else we may put like a I value at the loop statement also here it is there we can use the same thing also let's try one by one let's try so let uh, I need to identify the length of uh, these fruits so how I can check fruits dot l e n l e n g t h this method will identify the fruits how many are there it will give the number of counting the length count it will be stored in the len variable so now how i am taking these things let's check one by one okay so to be print requirement of uh, let text to be required let it be yeah now let i equal to zero let i equal to zero i less than like uh, these length based on the length it will be verified okay this is the number is going to be storing one two three four that way so i'm verifying with the my i value so anyhow i is going to be plus plus here so i need to print this fruits one by one um, the fruits are the fruits are how i can print the fruits how I can print the fruits? Mm, yeah, let's check here. Mm, F R U I T S. Fruits of fruits of I we need to take. Let's check. Let let me check run. Uh, this text is going to be assigned through this paragraph. Let me check how the output will comes. Wow, the fruits are apple. The fruit is uh, we can put fruit is. The fruit is. Okay yes save it and reload the fruit is apple banana kiwi pine independently we are reading each and every item so if i added one more fruit like uh, uh, gava save it reload gava is added how beauty it is there is a nothing will take much time to execute these statements why because the javascript on clients itself it will runs very quickly great i hope it's very simple and better to understand easy lecture catch you soon thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn how we are going to controlling our control flow statement till now we have seen to applying for loop while loop and uh, do while loop statements to making a condition with the with the condition is satisfied based on the condition we have uh, executed successfully now using break keyword to how to stop the execution how yes it is very simple and easy let's see 
inside the block of code of uh, if statement inside the block of code if statement i am implementing if condition see if i equal to equal to something like a 2 and here i am implementing one more statement which is called like a block of code like a break keyword b r e a k terminate that's it now let's see what happens if i run this program earlier we have seen all the things now what happens let's see one two three four five things we have get and now with the implementation of break keyword let's save this and run wow only two things are coming when i equal to zero y i equal to one till two items are coming then immediately if i is matching with the two value then immediately it is break the uh, loop statement it's terminating the loop it, it won't be depends upon the condition till the satisfaction or not this is very simply we can implement the break keyword in to control the loop statements all right in the next lecture we'll see the continue how happens thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn continue keyword previous lecture we have learned break so similarly here it is continue instead of break we are replacing a simple keyword inside the loop statement of for loop continue so what it will say is the continue so loop whenever you need to controlling a loop statement with the controlling of uh, any of condition if your work is finished maybe you are implementing and running some other uh, sms you are making sending or uh, any email you are sending that code if you want to write you can write here in this area you may write the email code or sms statements anything so once it is done you if you want to verify the next like uh, lines of uh, items any or data rows if you want to check it yes you can use the continue keyword by writing this what happens let's see if i equal to 2 and it will verify then it will continue the statement if we want we can uh, append something text to this and uh, we can add it let's check it first let's run it all the things one two three four five things we are getting here apple banana oh okay so i equal to equal to two item this kiwi is not printing here so it's so making like continue then it is going to be here and it will be executing once it is matched it is not continue so if we want to make it something more information to for a text so let's check uh, here we can write like uh, fruits of i you can write or else um, hello let me test it save it and run it so hello is printing so once it is a hello is printing it's making continuity so breaking the line so run see the fruit is apple banana then if i is matching then something is a written statements are executing inside the block not hold the iterations a particular iteration if we want to print something yes we can add inside the continue statement we can work with that then we can terminate from there to continue the progress so i hope it's very simple and easy lectures for you to maintain this loop statements i'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn very super easy lecture of creating list items in your products yes why i am using specifically html dom objects for this lectures means every web developer were accurately using html elements to interact to work more productively in applying javascript so here is in a lecture you may observe very clearly for creating like a for loop to read all the list items one by one and appending as a child 
let's see append as a child element or list item to adding and presenting in your HTML page. So how super easily dynamic way DOM objects are going to be create. The list items li is an HTML element how dynamic way it is going to be create. All these will be learned here using ChatGPT. So let's see here I just given a simple create a for loop program with the list items using HTML and DOM objects query in a dynamically and append elements to the DOM objects I have given to a query into ChatGPT. So this ChatGPT is given for me this particular response for loop example with DOM. See here the body is a UL unordered list which is an ID it's in a DOM document object model ID which is a list. From here it is an open script tag and it is an end script tag inside the JavaScript which is written by ChatGPT. This AI tool get the list of elements of the DOM what is a, like a constant list. This is the list it's a variable it's a locally it's created document.get element by ID of this list this ID of unordered list. Array of items how many items are taken like a constant items a list items which you can square braces which is a specified surrounded with the data of a string or number or any other data type you may specify inside the list items. We will see for more examples here like apple comma yes list items to, to be specified in a way of comma separated values banana orange grapes four items are here iterate over the items of array. So how for let i equal to 0 initial loop initiative i less than items dot length these items dot length what it will get the value here it is in a numeric value it will comes. So what dot length what it will do see how many items are here it will give you the number it's a 4 items dot length it's nothing but it's in a 4 i less than 4 i initiative of 0 so i plus plus incrementing the value to iterating for loop so iteration create a new list item once it is entered constant item like a list item variable is created document dot create element of li list item under the u L which is a li list item is going to be creating using this statement. See, see set the text content context of the list item. Now list item this variable dot text content like uh, items. What are the items? These items of i. i means every iteration it is in a first it is at a zero initiative. Next next iteration 1, 2, 3 ith of 0 item what it is it will comes to this index position next iteration 1 it will comes to the banana next item 2 orange 3 grapes the same way you will get in the items and these items are going to be appending here which is assigning on every iteration it is going to be assigning list item this item list dot append child this list item so every iteration it is going to be assigning and li is creating and it is going to be dynamic way it is going to be creating on HTML elements. Let's see take a copy of this code go to sublime text editor file new file just simply save this file as list 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 item item list item dot html list item dot html the file html is an extension which we require to test simply simple test take a copy of this take a copy of this code by clipping this click button and take a copy and come back to our html file where it is created yes not only sublime text editor which you comfortable and more uh, familiar ide which you are writing is a JavaScript. Yes, you can apply. So save this and I'm not created. I'm not done any line of code changes over here. Right click here. Open in browser. Apple, banana, orange, grapes. All the list items one by one it is created. How super easy. 
So program is ready. If you are the same way, the same program, if you want to make more items to be add like uh, uh, orange is there, kiwi, kiwi fruit is there. Save it and come back to the browser, reload. Program is ready. How many items, so list items you want to present into your browser as a product display. You can display it. And uh, one more item, grapes is there, banana is there, papaya. Save it and items reload not only the same fruits here it is coming automatically append child list item it's coming why see these for loop functionality which is already added here inside the program so instead of items if you want to specify any other numbers any other like a products or sale or anything you want to display our names of the students yes it's a super easily you have an, a functionality of ready-made program with you chart GPT is created for you how to use it learn the basics perfectly using chart GPT to very less time you just write a query and get the code and use in your real-time program make a master and quickly practice more and more if you want to like a one more for loop or one more item if you want to separate item if you want to present what you do you just take a, a ul with another id name all you will write in different different lines what you require that's it create a one more list and one more list one or any and fruits or items or sale products anything and add for loop and same thing you can write it your program is ready why don't you try today for more examples and practice very well i wish you good luck catch you in the next lecture and moreover don't forget to go for chart gpt and hit and take a collect of the code and make sure to practice by changing your customization and understanding of every line of code what chart gpt is created the man intervention is highly essential to utilize these chart gpt ai programs wish you good luck thank you Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you will be assigned a simple coding exercise for you to solve. So here, based on the previous lectures, we are trying to giving you a simple assignment to test your knowledge. Making this, like a cracking this simple query, you will understand what you have learned so far. We hope that mostly you will crack it and you will identify the solution would be there in immediate next lecture. So let's see what is the problem statement. Prepare a multiplication table using JavaScript to print the output of HTML page. The expected output is the multiplication table for number 2. So 2 2's are 4, 2 2's are 2 3's are 6, 2 4's are 8. These multiplication table up to 10 levels. So try yourself. I hope most of the students, one of the while loop lecture is there, you can revise it and construct for loop statement according to the multiplication table. Let me see your findings. Anyhow, you will get next lecture solution for this. Once you write it, your code and test with our solution. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome here. Here is solution for your coding exercise. So let's check most of the th like our students, we hope that accurately completed your problem statement. Please check with your compare with the, your solution and logic which is implemented by yourself. And here is your problem statement solution. So let uh, take the numbers of for text and n and this statement we have implemented over here with the multiplication table is which is going to be printing and let i equal to 1 i less than or equal to 10 i plus plus. Here it is the same thing where uh, we have implemented in while loop. You need to know how to construct a string formatting and how the operators are applying while uh, 
taking an independent as a number inputs so finally you will get like a going to be assigned like a document that get element by id with that value is going to be assigning to this particular id which is a paragraph tag you will see the output i hope uh, most of the students are uh, perfectly cracked i think so if not please uh, recap with a uh, retake a code and practice yourself okay thank you very much hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn javascript functions a very simple and basic lecture you are going to learning that is creating a function in javascript and how to access this function you are going to be learning let's see very simple lecture we have prepared here so the function preparation to assigning a particular value to this javascript element only so let's see how the things are going to be happen here so the function what is function so the function i have told you in the introduction lecture whereas uh, i'll give you a simple example over here also so far we have written a code in a single form as a programmer is better way to organize our code to break a small chunks of our code why we require to making a small to manage and reuse and maintenance in multiple ways where the problem statement is required to reuse so based on this function we can call and reuse the code that is the purpose we are making and creating the functions functions will play key role in your program so always try to practice more while writing the functions and making the small small chunks of programs so let's see a basic function how it would be okay parameters we call it as and passing the arguments we call it as i'll clearly explain you one by one so let x equal to something okay so first we need to like uh, prepare a function let's like uh, we have to prepare a function uh, simply i'll write a function yeah here i'll write it first hmm my function name is f u n c t i o n function using the keyword of function we need to write the function in javascript okay um, we call it as uh, multiplication m u l t i p l i c a t i o n my function name is multiplication so the multiplication is require a comma b two values inside i am writing A written keyword R E T U R N written keyword to returning A into B. These two values I'm going to getting a return. Return method like a, a keyword will throw out where the function is called. So this function I'm calling from let x equal to here I'm calling this function. All right, and here I'm sending two comma um, four. two values i am sending when i am calling this function what happens these are the parameters we can say that where the function inside we are writing some variables and where we are accessing this function from here i am calling this function okay so this function where i am calling we are specifying the data values these will be called as arguments okay so very clearly what happens when i am x when let declared with the variable of x i am calling equal to i am calling the uh, particular multiplication function by passing these two arguments as a data values so what happens once if i called it it will be reached here a is assigned by 2 b well value like variable is assigned with the 4 so now here it is uh, inside entering the values inside the block of function a into b is happening 2 into 4 Two fours are eight. So the total value is written using written keyword. It will be how the ball is bounced back when you throw to the wall. The same way function will return the value of the total what it is inside. Then this value is coming back to here and it will be assigned to the x. 
So these x I am using here. Let's see how simple using the functions. Now let's see if I run this code, I have to see like uh, this value is going to be assigning to this p tag. We have to see the output here. Let's save the document and run. So wow, eight I am getting very clearly, very simply. If I am applying like a addition symbol, I'll get what I'll get it here. Two plus four. Reload six. I'll get that's it. How simple it is by making function constructions very very easily. We can prepare. All right, and also you can call the function from here itself using the x place. You may call the function also. How simple it is. I'll show you. Uh, let's take uh, the same function and uh, I'll put here. And uh, constant c o n s t const function and uh, multiplication I'll call instead of x and uh, here I'll pass the values of two comma five any value you ever wish any value you may send it no problem okay and uh, let x is not required now let x is not required now let's see how it will be save it and uh, two five seven reload. Okay, nothing we are getting. So let me check here first. Mm, constant function, c o n s t function multiplication. Okay, uh, just wait. We have to write this way. Constant multiplication equal to function. This way we need to write. So now, how it would be called? This variable is going to be assigning here. So this variable we are passing these values. This will be called as function constructing a function. So save it and run it. We are getting the value. If it is a multiplication, you will get the multiplication value. Reload. That's it. The similar either way we can prepare a function. It will be called like uh, this method is called like func function construction of a function. Function constructor. Clearly, I can say that function constructor. All right. In the next lecture, we'll see more and more examples uh, with uh, how to like uh, make uh, more functionality with the functions. Okay. I'll catch you soon. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn call method with the passing of arguments in functions. So JavaScript function basic function we have seen earlier. Now we are going to extending more and more with the advanced function we are going to seeing now. Let's see within a script how I am preparing a function statements very simply using const keyword person. I am taking a Person words and these like uh, like uh, this is I am going to assigning like a dictionary items. So let's see here I'll add like a full name that equal to like a here I am writing like a if you n yes function function name these are the things are required here it's in a uh, sublime text editor is giving these things okay so the function. Inside the function, I am creating two arguments. What is a city, comma, country? C O U N T R Y, country. Two parameters I have added. Now the body would be the body of the function would be return. Uh, this keyword would be used whenever we are implementing inside. So I'll write this uh, implementation first name. And uh, plus plus concatenation would be done with this dot last name, this dot last name, and again concatenation would be there uh, with the help of city, yeah, city, and uh, same again. Mm. 
if uh, what we need to do like uh, city after city we need to put like a uh, plus plus again uh, double quotes comma country yes country and terminate so this is the function where we have uh, prepared for the written statement so where is the first name where is the last name let's see i'm making independent i'm making independent like a person like a person one person two data we are going to preparing now so const like a prs one uh, here what we can create yes now what we require now first name mm, what is the first name for the person like uh, john <coughs> last name would be mm, sorry perry so the dictionary items i am prepared here so here it is not terminated we can put the comma so the first name last name of uh, the person one is over so take a copy of this code block and make it as one more data item conveniently which is a person two okay so mary alice mary alice so the data of the two persons we have added and we have prepared a function very clearly done successfully all right now we need to call the particularly this function with the full name how using the call method we can call it so let's see now how it is possible to call let's write here um like a person yes person we have created a class with the variable of the person by pressing dot by pressing dot full name where we have uh, specified the full name of the uh, function yes this one this one person dot we are getting not full name yes we are getting here so the person dot full name we have a uh, identified person dot full name by pressing dot there is a method called c a l l call and here we need to call using the call method to passing the arguments to the function which function this full name function so what is the first one uh, either this data or this data which data you want to call based on that you have to specify so i am taking as the first one first argument and making comma what are the two arguments so we do that and comma country india save it and run the program wow john perry hyderabad india he is a successfully coming like a see now you may understand this full function name is going to be assigning this first name and last name from the person one so the first name last name these are going to be this keyword is used to this keyword is used to representing the data items are going to be mapping for this particular function all right similarly this dot last name so if i given this uh, call method the person to what happens now this block of code will be going to be taken as this save it and reload mary alice hyderabad india if you want to change this argument values you can change it and test yourself uh, very accurately so the ultimately you are seeing the result with the using of call method all right by passing the arguments to the function and how we are going to be recalling with the group of data using json objects also very similar to this okay we'll catch you in the next lecture by making simplification of the passing parameters how making very simply we'll see okay thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn a very simple lecture 
that is functions with parameters earlier lecture also we have observed the passing the arguments and parameters those lectures will like uh, especially for this lecture we are making a very simplification we have applied here so let's see out of uh, like uh, by using like a function adding with the for loop statement how simply we are uh, going to be making here we may observe so let's see like uh, one by one uh, we are going to preparing to identify like uh, what we can say a function like a sum of all numbers okay by passing the parameter by creating the function for sum of all numbers let's see if you can see t i y n function sum t o t i can say sum total okay and here i am uh, making a function name and uh, now let's see sum total why i am making multiple parameters so i'll uh, send i'll i'll make it uh, on while calling the function so sum total i am putting here okay let uh, sum equal to initial value is 0 and terminate the code and uh, making reading all the items whenever we are having some group of data we need to read like uh, using for loop we need to write all right for loop we need to write i equal to 0 i less than arguments dot length what the arguments are going to be calling from a particular area we need to put like arguments dot length so we are going to be assigning something like uh, arguments dot length let's check it a r g u means arguments dot length to identifying the arguments passing arguments length so i plus plus okay inside the for loop inside the for loop block once we initiated the for loop we need to again uh, initiate the things so sum uh, plus equal to what i need to write here arguments of i arguments of i i need to write and terminate the thing okay so arguments of i i need to terminate the thing uh return sum yes you are return sum of the numbers what we have prepared so while calling the sum tot function let's take a sum function and uh, here so i need to add some numbers over here no sum 2 sum 3 sum 5 3 only i am sending to the function let's check first okay this uh, total is going to be assigned this function is going to call to this function and uh, here uh, it will be identify and uh, once we'll get the return we'll get the assign to this demo this paragraph is going to be assigned some value we'll be able to see in the output save it and run it wow 10 we are getting so 5 it is correct so let's change the numbers more save it and run wow accurately we are getting we are, we are able to calling the value like uh, to the function and we are able to getting the output in successfully so let's see this is the function name we are calling this function with the multiple data parameters these are arguments these are if we are assigned any number of argue like a uh, parameters here based on the parameters only we need to uh, send the function here what happening there is a no restriction for these type of functions i have prepared a dynamic uh, function for yourself to understand very easily so n number of arguments you may add here like numbers so it will be called this function it will be entered here and loop will check the arguments uh, how many you are passed and according to the arguments it will be verify the length and uh, it will be like uh, treated here so how simple and how beauty it is so here arguments passed by value objects are passed by references strongly remember arguments are passed by values objects are passed by reference in the javascript coding so i'll catch you in the next lecture thank you Hello everyone welcome here 
in this lecture one more method which is a function bind method you will find here so let's begin very simply how the display a person name within a three seconds we can setting the time also so let me prepare a person with the dictionary data over here first so removing these things const yeah constant with the person equal to making the data of uh, first name colon putting something like uh, John comma uh, we can say that uh, last name colon Perry yes we can take a comma display uh, what to be the, like a display like a function I am preparing here and this function when the call that this function is going to be written something let x equal to uh, something like a document meant yeah document dot get element by id of uh, which one demo we have given for paragraph so that bind option we are going to be implementing now so x dot inner html equal to this dot first name concatenation with um, concatenation with last name terminate so this is the way we have a prepared this function to making very simple display we are calling function let x uh, we have uh, sub split it into two parts that's it nothing more there split it into two parts to making our convenient so let display equal to how it is going to be making uh, like output for the user uh, let's remove this mm, like um, let display will use a keyword let display that equal to person dot d i s p l a y display dot bind b i n d bind method what is that p e r s o n line terminate and set there is a key single keyword time small letters of time out of these display function will be called after uh, around three seconds save it and reload one two three Boom. nothing is coming <laughs> what a uh, what a surprise it's given to me one two three boom no nope. so let me check uh, a simple code once okay constant person equal to first name and uh, last name and uh, John Doe and display it's a function method which is called let x equal document dot get element by id which is a clearly we have a special specified here sorry it's a demo so minor a line or a character or a space may happens in your coding see this id we are calling here so it is in a dump i have written so save it and run one two three boom still we are not getting so let me check again so x dot uh, it's a demo we have a given by demo id perfect like uh, x dot inner html it's a capital letters we have given correct this dot first name wow here also we have to specify this dot otherwise function will not understand what is this this using this keyword means inside it will be treated as this is that's it okay save it and reload the page one two three boom <laughs> what a awesome <laughs> great so save this and reload one two three boom we are getting how the javascript we are making a functionality if you are putting like four let's check the timeout display 
Light, let's check it. Save it and uh, run. 1, 2, 3, 4. Boom! I hope you are enjoy this such a type of programs while interacting more, making timeouts and all in JavaScript. And uh, try to practice more functionalities and uh, more uh, CSS and elements and graphics and loop wise. You may put this set timeout inside the loop also while you enjoy a lot. So write more and more. We'll catch you in the next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn how to call a function with arguments using ChatGPT program. Yes, I am asking ChatGPT to create, write a JavaScript function with arguments and calling how to call with by passing the data arguments with the help of HTML DOM objects. Let's see, here ChatGPT is a created a program for us. So JavaScript function with arguments. So button click is created with the function name called like a greet and name is John as a data argument. Click me. When I click here, this function greet function is going to be called by passing this John data. It's here it is called data argument and here it is called as a parameter. So the function which is created with the name of greet and alert hello this name what is the name I am passing to the function this name is going to be applied here like added this variable name like a parameter name is used hello John which is going to be getting as an output. So here is an example what I have explained here a step by step process it uh, like a chart GPT is also explaining for us. And you just understand it how to use and how to customize very super easily. Why I am using DOM objects means we just interact with the HTML pages in real time. Let's take a copy of this code. Come to your favorite browser and here you just go to create a new file and simply save as function.html file name is an extension is an extension and save as perfectly in your browser. What ChatGPT is given for is the same code. If you want, you can make it the customization of the code, save it in your way and practice. So save like a first you see take a copy of this code and run open in a browser. Click me when I clicked what you see. Wow. Hello John. It's coming perfectly as an alert. So alert is written. Otherwise, you can also create DOM elements of development or any paragraph ID and doc element doc like a document that get element by ID of this inner HTML also you can append to this ID and present the data in your HTML other than alert. How super easy and it's in a one parameter like one data argument is passing to this function here if you want to add one more like a first name and a last name how it is possible yes see John with uh, Perry one more data argument I have added and here also what I'm trying to doing F name comma L name I have taken two parameters inside the grid the same way what I'm trying to doing here here very simply just to see put a comma or else comma or space also you can take it no issue put a comma just I'm taking just I'm trying to making a manipulation here so inside here plus plus inside here like a first one is F name and the last one is L name yes ID is also suggesting so take a copy save it and reload your browser just click me hello John Perry if you don't want like a putting a like a comma, you just simply remove the comma. Concatenation is happening. Save it. Reload the page. Click here. Hello, John Perry. The same way you just simply customize the code your requirements. Customize the code. 
if you added if you want to make it like a a function with more arguments you just write by comma and single quotes with the data arguments by adding and the same way you just customize your function name or you can create your own functions see a simple example i'll uh, like uh, see uh, just this button i am taking as a copy and uh, the function name is show john only will go the data item mm, show here show here just simply is a simple thing copy of this function paste what is the function name show sh whatever you have the capital or small letters you are preparing the same way you have to write in the function names and variable names and all don't forget right this thing i'm removing from here yes now name only just this is not i'm not changing anything like a show like uh, any product if you want like a uh, apple yes uh, hello apple okay no issue save it two buttons will be displayed why because there's another button i have created here show here correct save it perfectly you have to save in the browser reload show here just click the show here hello apple if you click the click me here hello john perry what the functionality you want to make the customization how super easy by understanding the function by understanding where you want to apply your customization in your function if you know clearly by using chat gpt by creating a basic structure of program with ease along with this functionality you just make a customization how you required as your business requirement i hope it's a super easy lecture to create more and more functions using chat gpt try to practice with more real world examples wish you good luck thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn how to handle such a errors while writing in live program so try catch block to handle such a errors you need to implement a code using like see within a script tag we need to implement this here i am implementing so this is not required for modern browsers so hence i am removing so here the code would be try within a parenthesis here it is c a t c h catch catch e r r catch would be like uh, catching the errors here we need to write something like uh, error message this is the catch block will catch the errors if any and uh, like uh, on catch once the error is happened something it will be catching here and it will uh, runs the catch block if any program is written to throw to the user all right now let me check one simple thing here let me check to write a simple thing over here and uh, i'll explain you okay so just i'm adding a simple program to verifying uh, a clear information like uh, by implementing see before going to implementing here uh, just i'm writing something like uh, alert message a l e r t alert uh within uh, here i can write uh, welcome to java script welcome to java script now i terminate it save it and see welcome to java script output we are able to seeing here close it so this alert is getting very perfectly we are getting an error like message in when i refresh the browser the alert welcome to java script message i am able to successfully get it instead of uh, like uh, alert i may add it something i don't know save it just run it we are not able to getting the message in such a time we need to take this message this alert message to cut here cut here and paste into the try block paste into the try block 
and if we run it what is the message is the error is happening in the try block it will be catched through this catch method so once it is the error is catching like uh, we need to check with the uh, some output we require now like uh, we may place it like uh, paragraph tag here yes p tag with the id equal to to assign something it's a demo okay so now here what i'll write to get an output document dot get element by id document get element by id this demo dot inner html that equal to err specifically err what err this err dot message what the message is going to be assigned to this particular error message will be assigned to here and that message i am assigning to our uh, javascript element so this id is going to be presenting here what is the error is happening so it will be greatly helpful for you when i save this code and reload see is not defined a w e l e r t is not defined message we are able to getting here so this is the error message it is there so if i am removing this and uh, something if i have written like alert save it see welcome to the message message will come successfully so to making javascript unknown things or any wrong may be happening you may put like a try catch block coding try catch block coding to handle such a great errors and i uh, easily identify what the mistake is happening in your program and uh, unknowingly some data is wrongly coming inside the program maybe something is happen so such a cases of uh, functionalities also you may catch by writing try catch block coding always try to practice try catch block coding where you will handle like a uh, great uh, issues great problem statements you may write yourself and handling if you are not coming in the client side you may check inside what happening by putting such a alert messages and all okay so happily practice this in the next lecture we will learn many things see you there thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn try catch finally block we have seen previous lecture it is a try catch blocks only now we are extending this error messages to handling see here we can write finally so inside the block respective of this finally block will execute the code statement which is written here uh, irrespective of a try catch it will be finally at final it will executes how these things we are going to be explaining more in detail here let's see let's uh, take a simple example and exercise over here by taking like uh, input yeah input will take like uh, like input means text box yeah input type it is an uh, uh, we can take it as an a text box we can take and the name we may take it as an a like uh, demo and id also we may take it as an a demo all right so input text box is taken reload this is the input text box something okay so for this input text box i am taking like a uh, one uh, um, button to take an action so the button what the button it would be like a testing value okay button would be displaced with the testing value very good so the button like a type is button we need not to write whereas if we need to write like b u t t o n and uh, on click we need to prepare a function on click we need to prepare a function inside the javascript so here 
let's check the javascript is here try catch finally black in this way only we are going to preparing this function so let me write the function first uh, so function function name of the function is my uh, value my cals my cals i am writing my function name okay so inside the function what i am trying to write in the code so what i am to uh, trying to write in the code let's see the message i want to push here like uh, p1 as an id so here what i'll write <coughs> cunst const message message that equal to document dot get element by id of get element by id of p1 <coughs> terminate now message like uh, sorry uh, message dot inner html that equal to by default it is an empty if it is there any messages by default if it is there any messages it will be empty so what i am trying to adding here let uh, let uh, some x y z anything x equal to document dot get element by id get element by id what is the id we need to choose this input this input dot value what value which is entered inside the some number in the text box by the user like this numbers okay when I, when i press something it should be treated something some calculations i'll i'll show you some functionality i'm preparing here let's now uh, we should initiate our try catch block coding so i'm taking this group of like a try catch finally block here i am adding paste it okay so according to the block of code you may set right this code yeah <coughs> catch finally all right this way we need to write this is a brace for this function okay and now in inside the try if x equal to equal to empty if x equal to equal to empty what the message will say see we should receive some message to output no T H R O W throw keyword will help you such keywords is E M P T Y terminate the line okay if there is a method called is N A N means not a number method is there if not a number which one these x user entered something nothing is there and uh, like uh, some like A B C may he may enter and uh, he may test it how it is possible to get so we are offering the user to entering the like some numbers of 5 to 10 numbers only in between that's it okay 5 to 10 or 5 to 20 the range we may put we may fix it so for that i'll write a line statement over here with the p tag please enter number between 5 to 10 only save run okay so the user needs to understand where he needs to enter so how i will control these uh, numbers so how i will control this number if x not a number will throw in a message what is the message will throw to the user let's see i'll take this copy of this code and paste it's not a number it's not a number it's not a number two things are completed so if we abc just throw so these all the things will be handled one by one okay so if if like uh, let's see if uh, x equal to number of 
if x equal to number of uh, let me write here something where is the tri block only no yes x yeah x equal to number of this x and terminate and let's see if if it is a number uh, x greater than 10 throw it's too high throw terminate too high and uh, we may put like a one more if condition messages like throwing an errors messages to the user and uh, x less than yeah below if it is two it's like a throw a message to it's too low perfect so it's too low and uh, something catching an error the error is a message is a like a, uh, how we can take message dot this we need to put there yeah this thing we need to put so these all are not required yeah message so the message what we need to write here in a message it is like a, mm, something uh, input concatenation with err if you want more like dot message also you may add here okay and uh, finally we are going to presenting in a data with the final statement like uh, document dot get element by id of demo of this id this id input id okay and dot val ue value is equal to empty once the validation part is completed it will be like uh, making empty at finally irrespective of try block may run may not run or catch block may run may not run it should be run on every running of the program every time save it reload the page and enter it click here so will i get anything here let me check if a run so if your number run so i think uh, this is not working my calc yes why it is not running we need to write inside the button this function how we will write the function let's see on click yeah on c l i c k on click what is the function name my c a c l so lc is the function name we have to write okay lc my calls okay save it save it and reload the page testing some value testing number testing so let me check what happening here and uh, why this is uh, not properly giving and uh, making in actions to my requirements okay so what i need to do now what i need to do now message i have given document dot get element by id message dot inner html empty and uh, so let x equal to document dot get element by id of a demo the value which is receiving and text box which is entered so id so the name i'll remove it if both are there there is a no problem at all both should be acceptable okay both should be acceptable so let me check i have to clean check i have to verify the code on function it is my calc try block is inserted here if x equal to equal to empty 
if x equal to equal to empty throw is empty that is perfect is nan x is not a number of x throw it's not a number yeah this is also perfect now x equal to if it is not a number x equal to number of x in u m b e r that is correct if x greater than 10 uh, so this is a throw this keyword it should be it's a throw save it let reload no oh sorry 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 only the, like uh, between the number we have to enter testing okay so let's check like uh, till this part is reached and it is a uh, too low also we have written okay now try back try block is completed now what we need to see catching an error message dot inner uh, html input it is taking plus error code correct now finally block is having document dot get element by id of demo which is a making an empty that's it making an empty that is correct so what you will what we need to do save the program and run it uh, a uh, two something we are not able to getting an output properly the same program only we need to implement uh, my c a l c my cals on c l i c k on click button type v u t t o n on c l i c k my c a l c cals sorry really great we have to put a function so very simply we can miss the things save this and reload see if i am entering like a empty it's a input is empty it is coming where it is input is empty so this one is coming okay so if i entered two input is too low if it is one input is too low oh, nine yes valid and some text input is too low so any single line if you've written inside the javascript you may get an error messages okay so if i remove this and saving and running you won't get anything once like a, it's a memory i think so sometimes it may call like a memory inside the memory it may be allocated in javascript so many time if you are able, if you are not able to getting a proper output a proper output in your uh, javascript programs well, like uh, you need to create uh, like uh, clear the catchy up from your browser and you need to test very clearly then only you will get proper output okay if you want to make this number as a 20 like save it and uh, you need to change the number inside the code values save it and run so nine uh, like uh, 19 is also acceptable happily about to the 19 uh, 20 then it will give you like uh, some error message to you okay so all you need to test very clearly and uh, practice yourself so the runtime errors any messages will be given by using the throw keyword we'll catch you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn on submit click form validation so i'll show you a few parameters so based on that you may validate very clearly your form let's begin by creating a simple html form so the form is by writing form tag and uh, input tags for name 
and uh, input type text name or id you may take anything f name okay so or else you may also add id also email so the input type email and the name is email just simply i'm giving two parameters over here all right along with this two i'm putting here like uh, input type it is like uh, submit yeah submit it is there and the name also i'll give you like uh, uh, submit and the value also i'll give like uh, submit value is enough name is not required so i'm removing this name yes save this let's check here okay there is an alignment is required to make like uh, some break line i need to put like uh, some br line save it wow so this way i have a uh, created a simple form and uh, here i can write uh, two break lines let's check yes perfect now this is my form when i click this form when i click this form i need to like validate these two are not empty these two are not empty so let's see how i am going to validate it for this i am going to writing like a form name parameter it is like uh, some values i have to put here like uh, my small letter my r e g or my login whatever it the name you may put here okay and uh, method we need to write like uh, post method you need to use either post method or get method any one you may apply in php forms or any dynamic forms okay action if it's not mentioned any action it will be treated as self if you want to redirect some other places it may you may write action and uh, path of the file where it is required so now i need to write a specific functionality for on submit functionality to validate so where i can write this validation yeah either here below to the form or we may write here in, uh, by making a script tag yes this is the latest browser i am using now so script tag i am not applying here so here i'll write okay here what i'll write my function function valley validation my function name is validation all right so here uh, you may write validation or validate form anything any name or my registration any custom name you may write not specific to this validation only i am doing the validation for the purpose only i am preparing the name of validation only okay now let x equal to like a document dot Uh, forms like a uh, forms of what is the form name? What is the form name? Like uh, I am used here my R E G my registration form of my registration form of what is the my text box name? This text box first text box name is controller name is F name. So you need to write F name here. So once it is done. what you need value inside the uh, like uh, this value which we are entering here some value that value you required to validate what exactly you need the value which is entered inside the box you require so let x we have taken so we have one more parameter take a copy and paste here you may take like uh, next immediate letter it is y and the controller name is email dot value that's it two things are getting from the html element to the input values to here like um, javascript code now see now the game starts now if x equal to equal to if it is empty what i what i need to write here very simply i'll write very simply sorry not here yeah here i need to write Uh, immediately it should be a l e r t alert um, name must be must be name must be filled cannot be blank whatever it, uh, statement you want to write you can write here return uh, false return false now save it and 
run something submit it okay we have to call the validation function at here no so let's uh, call it uh, how i can call it on submit yes on submit event i need to call and uh, here return what is the function name validation yes oh sorry validate i o n validation yes return validation yes save this yeah save this and reload yes continue submit so return validation uh, anything else to be there here it should come like uh, something function it is written validation validation it is written same like a uh, written uh, on submit on submit equal to written validation this validation only we have a written here yes r e t u r n it's a wrong message it's written a written okay now save this and reload it submit wow name must be filled out name must be filled out how it is uh, it's not allowing to submit the data so return validation this function i am calling while when on button click on button submission i am calling this function so one thing i have written so next thing how simply take a copy hit enter change the variable of uh, y and uh, email must be filled that's it email must be filled that's it go for save it reload the form and submit name must be filled once it is done something it is entered submit email must be filled if it is entered the email submit you are like uh, here in html5 it is a email if you are type given automatically it will be accept only emails that validation is also done by yourself that a help the modern browsers will help in that way also while well, submit then only the form will acceptable very accurately so this is the on submission validations using javascript very simply using if else statements and uh, making how you are going to deal with the java html elements to controlling javascript you will be if you done so far lectures this is a very simple concept yours I hope so. We'll catch you in the next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn how to validate input numeric values. So let's check with by creating a simple form. in html we'll see here form tag open and and now we are going to writing inside something phone number you may take and uh, here we need to write like a uh, input type it's an our text or number also you can take directly okay text or number if you are taken like a uh, Uh, number only it will accept the numbers in JavaScript entry point. Unexpectedly, if any other uh, things are uh, not going to be permit, okay. So input type text I'm taken very simply we have given. So we need like uh, one uh, this one no uh, button. So input type button name. instead of name we can take a value as submit now i am going to implementing a function called num valid is num valid maybe you may think it about yourself okay let uh, we need to take the input from the let we need to take the input from the mm, input text box so how we will take the number let x equal to document uh, document dot get 
element element get element by name of this enum dot value okay so we will get so we are getting uh, this uh, le rt we are getting this x the value or not we need to check like by putting this x inside this alert message save it and run the program let's check it like uh, oh action we need to write for the form so actio in action post method and my form name also if required uh, form name like you may write uh, name equal to my val my form name and writing is in my val store now the number 12 i have entered submitted so here we need to call this function no yes on submit or on click also we can write so i'll check it with the on submit yeah on submit return uh, num valid this num valid function i need to call it save this reload the page if i enter 12 submit alert should become no so document dot get element by name in um i have a specified uh, let me check with double quotes no number in um yes no okay save it le me and element by name correct save it reload the page R E T U R N R E T U R N num valid function that's correct action post I have specified uh, <laughs> action is not post sorry me method method will use post okay if it is self not required for uh, not required for okay so reload the page perfectly control f5 and uh, something you type so a l e r t l at x we are not getting so this is the string only we won't get so only x yeah document get element just i may take it like it's an id and um uh, document dot get element by id of num let's check now how uh, it will be treated now okay so the dot oh sorry 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 the terminator is required no the terminator is highly required no save it run the program so 2012 please uh, this ID we have a given something written post on submit we have written so still what the mistake and uh, like uh, what the things we need to write here by ID we are accepting let me check here i'll write another mode of this so let x equal to like a document dot uh, name of the function my val my form name this is okay and uh, by pressing the dot num is my like uh, name of the parameter dot value okay let's check now reload it something if i entered submit it's not taken mm, let's change here it's a my form so the same form will be applied over here okay and here it is name so reload the form
Tinel. So let me verify. So let's check here. It's a button we have written uh, replace to submit. Everything will be done now. Submit. So submitting something says something. If I am given 23, we are receiving 23 as an alert. Yes. So all we have to make in a concentration which very much required. So once X is receiving which the data input of text box which are like uh, which we are receiving able to receiving like a uh, alert alert on x we are able to see okay now comment this line okay comment this line very simply there is an, a method called if is nan that's it is n a n if it is not a number of like uh, what is that n u m it is an uh, x so if it is not a number what we will write what we will write in a message else statement we can prepare uh, written sorry yes written t r u e okay written true like uh, if not a number what will uh, convey the message to the user document dot get element by id of like uh, something uh, we need to convey the message to the user so with that id is i will put e r r o r i'll put it dot inner html that equal to um, custom message enter number in um only this error i made through here with uh, any span tag or p tag also we can write so id id that equal to error save it just check it now something if i am entering qw uh, yeah span tag we have to prepare here span id to be prepared to get an error message okay let's check with that uh, span tag mm. where here i need to write s p a n yes span yes this span is going to be like uh, id equal to error okay this message uh, copy yes done uh, yeah save it and reload the page successfully just submit yes let's see yes on submit you may observe here you are getting an error message like a span tag very clearly you are getting a message on fly and it's going on why because uh, so much uh, information i have added over here so it's happening i think so so if i am entering some number on submit we won't get anything if i am submitting some abcd on submit see something is happening like uh, on submit it is uh, immediately like uh, um, displaying error and it's throwing away it shouldn't go why it is happening uh, in my browser uh, uh, see it's keep on running in the, in the wave only in the wave only we need to write the code okay doc element under written true else written true it is uh, not this one yes 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 here uh, we can do one thing r-e-t-u-r-a written false once it is uh, something is happening I'm, I'm staying the screen written false if i write reload the page some number it's okay something else it's a number only got it so how simply uh, we can get the error messages Control c break i'll put here save it reload the page yes asd 
submit enter numbers only okay i hope you will create very clearly this lectures by validating of the number validations i'll catch you soon thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn login form validation so how simple it is we are looking we are going to validating a login form let's see very simply how i am making this uh, form to login form like uh, instead of number i may put here it is a uh, name input type text and name it is like uh, name okay error let it be the same id and uh, input it is in a submit should be there and password you may put like name or the login any name you may use okay input type password and a name is you, you can simply give the keywords like a password or psd whatever at the keywords you may give save it and reload the page yeah name and password something is space is here okay i'm not concentrating on the design so let it be see the like a name and password and button button name it should be like a value like a it may be registration form or login whatever it you may put here okay now let's see the alerts how we are accepting first here it is a name we need to switch yeah name dot value something something like it is a uh, like a let we can clarify with the name and uh, one more variable we have to like two parameters are there so second parameter it is a password passwrd password and here it is an uh, passwrd or password shortcut also you may write here clear so it's very clear now what i am trying to do in like uh, i just remove this code and uh, i'll write again fresh code so if if name equal to equal to empty or null if name equal to equal to empty or null uh, by putting our condition uh, name equal to equal to empty string when it is happened when it is happened should get an alert 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 of the message what the message name uh, must be uh, must be filled name must be filled uh, written written false if not filled by the name written to be false okay and the second condition else if else if else if password equal to equal to um, empty if password is also empty we can check it all right so uh, if uh, there is a no password also we can throw the error and i am verifying here to identifying the password that length password dot length if it is below six characters if it is below six characters um, i let off um, password minimum six c h e r a c t e r s characters should be there what the message you want to put you can add over there okay false terminate now let's see by running this code num valid the function which is called two parameters we have written something if you want more you can write it reload the form and submit see name must be filled it's a throwing some error so something it is entered submit password minimum six characters login so only three i have given submit password minimum six characters if i am given more than that then only it will accept so in real time in real time by putting these are the server side not uh, server side it's a these are the very purely 
client side validations these are the client side validations see based on that input html element id we are receiving the name we have instructed here so based on that we are receiving that values and we are going to be working here all right i think it's very simple and easy lecture i'll catch you in the next lecture thank you Hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn chat gpt applying to creating a program of password length check using javascript yes this program i am asking to chat gpt to write a javascript password length check validation form with html and dom objects let's see here javascript password length validation form using html dom it is created clearly crystal clear so let's see a title for password length check validation and form within inside the body a form is created with parameters of password form label password and the type input it is in a type it is taken password directly and the id is password type is button it is like a submit now very clearly the script open tag and end tag it is created here now very clearly it is taken for password form get the password from the password input from the dom using dom objects we are going to constant keyword password from like a document dot get element by id password from like this form what the password it's getting like a form we are getting and the second one is password input what the input it is given like a here it is in a password input what the user is going to be entering inside the text box now once the submit button it is given like here verifying like get the password and password input from the dom we are getting here and it is going to be assigned to this particular two variables now add event listener from the submission submission like when the button is clicked user is a submitted for his password add event listener this event listener is raised on button of type submit function event it's coming and prevent default prevent from the submissions so like uh, when user is not entered any text so it won't entertain anything and uh, if a user is not click the button it won't give a proper response so the prevent defaults it's giving the on submission next immediately the password is like a this input dot value what is the value here it is directly here also you can give the value and this directly this input uh, password input also you can use it yes this customization when you know how to use this variables how to get the dom objects handling yes you can customize your code and you can make it shortcuts now here it is in a, this password input that value which is going to be assigning this particular variable now simply decision making is added here chat gpt is given password dot length less than 8 if it is late password must be at least 8 characters long it is throwing an alert this is the alert message it is throwing outside the browser and if it is a password is above 8 characters of length this is the password dot length it is directly will give the how many characters you have entered inside this test box where it is coming this test box this is the test box where is this get document dot get element by id this password id is this type input the id is type is password and id is password this text box it is coming to here and it is assigning to data is here this is coming to appending here now this password is validating like password dot length we are getting a characters how super easily the structure is framed so whenever you are creating a user registration form or login form you just simply apply this function this add event listener form also you can add it to your code so password is valid if it is above 8 characters a code here is a handle valid password case that's it 
now just simply you can what i have explained here all the chat gpt is also explaining you a step by step process so now you just go here and take a copy of this code go back to your favorite coder or code editor or sublime text editor take a file password.html just i'm taking as an html page copy of this code right click just i'm not doing any manipulations here just right click open in browser just check it test four characters only i have given submit password must be at least eight characters how the alert is happened here with the javascript the dom object how we are going to be controlling okay so just i'm giving four more characters just submit password is valid really i hope it's great practice it's great practice if you are given below to 8 it it will throw you automatically an error and let's check let's check i just i need like a, i am giving like an otp assume that any otp i'm just it's required for only four characters just simply four characters only maybe all the text all the passwords under all the text labels you can change it so the four password length characters are four only so you just go back to here save the file and reload just let me check it 1 2 3 4 only i have given submit yes password is valid here you can give otp is valid that's it how business rule is changed you can utilize the same functionality in different different validation scenarios so hopefully if you are given three characters only again it will say that password length must be eight characters i am not changed anything here what you need to do the error message here otp must be at least four characters over long only you have to change it so try to practice not only the length check validation for not only the password either otp characters mobile characters or uh, pin code characters or any other where you have to check the length perfectly there you can apply the same real world program which is given by chat gpt ai tool so learn the basics perfectly and how to use chat gpt learn it perfectly and apply quickly you will be make a master using javascript i'll see you in the next lecture thank you Hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn javascript advanced concept yes with the help of chat gpt i am trying to getting what strict mode and why we require to use this strict mode in javascript programs yes javascript strict mode will help us very greatly see here what chat gpt is also supporting for us to get more accurate artificial intelligence information to improvise our javascript programs javascript strict mode feature that was introduced in ecmascript 5 es5 is an a shortcut to enforce stricter parsing error handling in javascript code how super easily we just control our programs and how we can control to make debugging to making a smooth clean program when strict mode is enabled certain actions of uh, practices that will be considered an error or potentially problematic are converted into explicit errors making code more robust and less error prone so using this strict mode javascript specific functions adding the following statement beginning of the function we just use strict mode in this way see when we strict mode enabled following changes or restrictions are apply in our program so variable must be declared in the strict mode strongly remember these all are very very important to control your javascript program to work in perfect way you must explicitly declare variables using var let or constant keywords before using the variable declaration 
assigning the value to the undeclared variable or creating a variable without where let or constant keyword which result will get an error so strongly remember and eliminates implicit global variable non strict mode if you are assigning a value to undeclared variable creating implicit variable like a global variable strict mode prevents this behavior and disallow octal literals in non strict mode you can define octal literal example 0 1 2 3 some example in strict mode octal literals are not allowed clearly using them will into the result a syntax error it will show you when you are using strict mode prohibits duplicate parameter names in strict mode automatically the function parameter names must be unique and the variable names must be unique declaring multiple parameters with the same name will result an error it will show you prevents like a deletion of variables functions and function arguments in the strict mode attempting a delete variables functions or function arguments when you are passing in the same name it will throw you an error in non strict mode such attempts would be silently fall like a fail and it will show you in a smooth process you may ultimately get a result in the way of wrongly you will get an error make this like a this keyword value undefined functions are not like a methods in not strict mode functions are not methods in regular functions have their this value of this global objects window in browsers global in node.js it's a server in strict mode this value is set to undefined this keyword for functions that are not methods changes of the behavior of eval in strict mode the scope of uh, like a variable and functions created inside the eval is uh, limited to the eval function itself non strict mode they are created current scope what the scope it is there till it this eval will be used so strongly remember strict mode help to catch common program mistakes of the prompt writing of more reliable maintainable javascript code it is recommended to use strict mode perfectly it will help you thank you Hello everyone, welcome here. In this lecture, you are going to learn ES6 latest features in JavaScript. Yes, with the help of ChatGPT, I am trying to get in this information into you. And JavaScript ES6, it's a ECMAScript script 2015 introduced several new features, enhancements to the language developments and improvements to getting more powerful, expressive tools here are some features i am explaining here with the help of chart gpt so let's see a keywords of a let and constant keywords introduced declaring block scoped variables let allows variable reassignments while constant is used to declare in the constant cannot be reassigning the values as a constant variable so this is a very very important feature which is introduced in javascript arrow functions arrow functions provide a concise syntax for writing function expressions to have a shorter syntax compared traditionally we will write a function in the more lines to get to write the curly braces and statements adding written values and all to having and applying arrow functions making a small read like a simply readable inherit this value and surrounding the text we are writing arrow functions template literals see this template literals allows easier string interpolation and multi-line strings they are enclosed with the brackets with a single escape key and allow embedding expressions using dollar curly braces syntax 
Distracting assignments. Distracting assignments provide an easy way to extract values from objects. Arrays, separate variables, using concise syntax, it allows you to values multiple variables in a single statement how you can handle and how you can carry from one object to another objects. Spread syntax. Three dots with the single quotes allows the expression elements from iterable iterations. Where it will the iterations? Either arrays or strings, multiple string with the items as an items. Individual elements useful of copying of arrays and concatenating of arrays, list items, passing multiple items, one argument to another argument or functions. How you can use as a like a cotton box of items, how you are carrying from one place to another, the same way you can multiple data items you can carry. Default parameters. Yes, default parameters values allows you to specify default values, the function parameters, which is an argument if you are not specified, the default will be taken. And the earlier it is showing that undefined. Classes. ES6 introduced class syntax to provide more convenient of object-oriented programming. So constructor of functions in the JavaScript, default classes provides a blueprint for creating objects, properties and methods. Introducing like object-oriented programming in more way to working and reusing a code techniques apply. Modules allows you to organize code between multiple files. Creating multiple JavaScript files you can utilize to calling by using of import and export keywords to import is using to another file code you are going to utilizing in a file working file importing and this functionality you want to export using export statements. These all are using for reusing of code to avoid writing multiple times the same code and same functionality. Enhance object literals. Object literals were enhanced in ES6 provided new features like the shorthand property names, compound property names, methods. Promises. Promises provides more elegant way to handle asynchronous operations. This asynchronous operations call back, call push. Premises represent eventual competitions. The failure of asynchronous operation allows chaining operation using then and catch. These are built-in methods will be taken care to handle of asynchronization fault tolerance. Iterators and generators. Iterators and generators provide a way of definition of custom iteration behavior of objects. Iterators allows you to define sequence of values while generators are functions that can pause and resume their execution allow for more flexibility of iteration to continue the process in a way of to get more accurate performance of your application. These are the just a few highlights which we have a getting in ES6 features with the help of ChatGPT. ES6 bought significant improvements of JavaScript making more expressive, readable and powerful helping developers like for writing clear and clean efficient code subsequent of versions of ECMAScript have a built upon these features introducing even more enhancement to the language and advancement of having these features JavaScript is also coming up with uh, frameworks having these features if you learn perfectly while applying of uh, JavaScript Yes, you will be inside the advanced JavaScript and you will be master. 
गुड लक थैंक यू हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम हियर इन दिस लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू शो यू ए सिंपल ई एस सिक्स एरो फंक्शन सिंपल बेसिक एग्जांपल ऑफ फंक्शन हाउ वी कैन राइट विद द हेल्प ऑफ चार्ट जीपीटी यस जस्ट आई एम ट्राइंग टू आस्किंग चार्ट जीपीटी टू क्रिएट राइट ए जावास्क्रिप्ट ई एस सिक्स एरो फंक्शन एग्जाम्पल यूजिंग हिस्ट्री एम एल एंड जाम सो दिस डॉम ऑब्जेक्ट हाउ इट इज क्रिएटेड एंड हाउ एरो फंक्शन इज अप्लाइड so let's see here it is a given a simple html form along with the script code yes earlier one of the example we have seen that uh, button click example and uh, adding event listener so here just i'm taking a copy of this code and uh, here it is an example how it is given very clearly i will explain you here one by one it's the best process now create a new file save as es Six arrow function dot html. Save it. Paste the code. Now run. Test it. Open in browser. Click me. Wow! Button clicked. So functionality is perfectly working. Now the advanced element of uh, features. Let's see. Es six arrow function example. So what are the changes is applied in advancement? it's a super easily very simply see handle click so a button add event listener click handle click here it is written now here it is a written handle click function name of the function it is eliminated here and equal to the function this arrow implies yes this arrow alert button click that's it we are reducing the code lines defining arrow function using es6 syntax this is the cx like es6 syntax to prepare a very clean function simply rest of the code is very common see html element dom object like a id is my button so the getting element by from the dom like a constant as a variable button document dot get element by id this is a my button is a written here so when the event is clicked button is clicked so it will be event is raised now it will come here define the arrow function using es6 syntax handle click is an a variable it is taken and it's a function and using the arrow what to be done see alert button clicked and also you can write here customization my button clicked save it and add event listener to the button using arrow function now i am not specified in anything here on click events i am not added here so this is an advancement you have to observe so here button uh, like uh, this button this button dot add event listener this is a built in function inside the javascript so here it's in a click double quotes write the small letters of click and handle click this is the function like a defining arrow function name handle click when you click here this button this automatically fired and the arrow function alert will be thrown to the browser save it how reduce the code is reload click here my button it's on my i am added as an advancement customization so if you want to create your customization of uh, like uh, using this arrow es6 arrow function what you need to do you just create a button and call the element id and create the handle of another name and add the button event handler that's it how super easy try yourself in your way by making es6 advancement features by applying in your own javascript this is what you need to learn to making like uh, reducing the code and improving your javascript project developments wish you good luck thank you hello everyone welcome here in this lecture you are going to learn es6 classes 
yes when we see and when we are learning about to the classes in javascript means it's completely like a relevant to the object oriented programming so classes are blueprint of a program structure yes you can create two classes as many to reuse and reutilize the code same in the repeated way a simple example we'll see how to create a class in javascript with the help of es6 features and how simply we can call the class objects we'll see here with the help of chat gpt i'm just trying to asking to create a class simple example with the html and dom objects to see the output in here itself yes now let's see i just ask a chat gpt here and it is created a simple es6 class example for me so button click as we seen in the previous examples and the button id is an html element now script initiated here and ending here now inside the script it is created as a using in javascript or any other programming language you may see creating classes using keyword class which is a lower class lower case letters the class it is showing in another color means it's a reserved keyword and the class name is button handler inside the constructor it is prepared when the class is called automatically the default constructor will be initialized so constructor is not having any parameters if parameters is there once we calling a class we have to pass the data arguments so get the dom elements inside the constructor now see this dot button it is given equal to document dot get element by id this id is nothing but this html element id this dom document object model we are going to getting as an element inside the class now add event listener to this button see this dot this button and add event listener click when the button is clicked so this dot handle dot see the bind this now here you may observe handle click this is a handle click event like a function is a raised here this one what the what should be in the written it's in a simple javascript method it's in a jam, simple javascript method and when it is clicked bind this it is attended like a alert button clicked shall we check here how it is going to be happening and when like a, when we are creating a class and when we are creating a function we have to call it manually unless until it won't execute itself we have to call it so class to be instantiated now here you clearly observe chat gpt is a instantiated create an instance of in a class so as a handler like a local object using constant keyword handler is in a local object is equal to creating using new keyword this button handler what is this button handler it's nothing but it's a class name we are instantiating a class here means creating new local object so when we are instantiating automatically constructor will be called inside the constructor we have written a code means automatically when we are instantiating class this code will be executed so let's take a real example this what is the steps i have explained here all is explained chat gpt here a step by step process so let's see come to take a copy of this code we'll test it now how the button click is event is raising or not yes take a new file and uh, save it as class.html paste the code save it and right click open a browser click here wow button clicked what we have seen in the earlier example 
the same thing is happening here but earlier it is in a simply we have a used function and here I am using class so you don't you need not to worry at all here it is a created class with the class name for your practice you just simply change the class name and try your way this dot handle click means this function if you want to make another function you just prepare this function here and specify the function name and bind using this keyword what this alert is here it's automatically called if you want to customize this something functionality is the same you need not to worry about so reload click me my button is clicked so learn the step by step process which is given by chat gpt and how you just simply customize to reuse and reutilize and making the business requirement how you are going to be adding inside the logic try today with your real world practical examples See, it's in a create an instance. Yes, when you are creating a class, you have to call the class by creating new object creation. Create a new instance, creating a new object, creating a new class object, all are same. Different, different languages are having different names. So whenever you want, you want to create an instance, constant keyword and uh, this is the local object or any name you can it will be when you are in like a using a class programming means you have to treat it as an object equal to new using new keyword this is the new class is instantiating if you want to create one more uh, like a class instantiation see constant beauty oh no so the same name i don't want to use like uh, what is the name i can test i can use it equal to new keyword new instantiation you can create it n number of uh, objects you can create by using the same line save it new object instantiation as a test save it reload it click click two items click me i think it's in a click me only uh, the same or button is a uh, repeating twice so yeah button handler okay one button only no so the same thing so let's see save it twice i am called click one time is over see two times why two object instantiations are happening here so the class is advantage is object oriented programming advantages are the same class functionality n number of times you can call it by using by instantiating new objects I hope it's a super easy lecture and try to make advanced JavaScript expert in less time. See you soon. Thank you.